Hello, hello, everybody. We are continuing our Ace Attorney journey tonight with potentially the end to the fourth case, because I do believe that we are on the second day? The second day we begin with the, like, not interrogation, but the cross-examination of the old man who owns the wet noodle. The crazy man. The weirdo man. But... Oh, no. Yep. <laughs> I see day three, and my brain goes, Oh, day three, that means it's the last day of the trial. No, that is the third day that the case has been going. Technically. And it just, like, it did it. it. They just word it weirdly. That hurt my brain. December 27th, 10 a.m. District Court, courtroom number three. I'll need to remember how I did my Von Karma voice. Court is now in session for the trial of Mr. Miles Edgeworth. I also need to remember the mantra from last time. Don't get hooked up on information that you know is important just now. Focus instead on the character in front of you and what's important to them that you can catch them out, like we did with uh, Lada. The defense is ready, Your Honor. And apparently Karma is just not in the mood. Very well, apparently the prosecution is also ready. Who is the judge here anyway? Mr. Von Karma, your opening statement. Uh, very well, no opening statement, so... <laughs> he objects right then. Okay, I need to get my throat into good because this is one of the more demanding voices I decided to inflict upon myself like a fool. Not so fast, Judge. I was taking a meaningful pause before speaking. Right, of course. A prediction. Today's trial will end three minutes from now. I don't believe you. <laughs> Von Karma's voice has gotten away from me. Order, order! Mr. Von Karma, what is the meaning of your statement just now? <laughs> bah, must you question everything? It will be over in three minutes. We have no time to waste. I'll call my witness now. Right. I call my witness, my decisive witness to the stand. Is that mysterious boat? It's that mysterious boat shop owner. This guy is far more an easier voice to do. Witness, state your profession. Mm, um. Um, I'm the proprietor of the restaurant, The Wet Noodle at Gord Lake. <laughs> it snaps but says nothing. And I also rent boats. The night of the incident, you were in the boat rental shop, correct? Uh, many, yep, uh, yep, I was. Please testify. Wait a second. We still haven't heard who this old guy is. Raise an objection. Objection! Wait a minute. The witness hasn't stated his name yet. Because I did not ask him, Mr. Wright. Bah! I have predicted this trial will end in three minutes. Stop asking trivial questions and cooperate. I don't think the identity of the witness is a meaningless thing. Because we need to know, like, who they are. Like, what... Uh, just a little bit about them so that we can determine some things. Just being like, oh yeah, I'm a random guy, but we kind of need your name. Your relation to the case. <laughs> well, we know his relation to the case, but, like, the fact that you're trying to obscure the identity is a little weird. Yeah, right. The witness will state his name. Hmm. Hmm, well, uh, I'm not really sure, yep. What do you mean? My uh, memory. Your Honor, the witness does not remember anything beyond the last several years. Ergo, he cannot recall his own name. You could have just said that, Karma, instead of it being an ass. He can't recall, you say? Yes, but the incident in question took place three days ago. He can testify. 
Very well. Let's hear his testimony then, shall we, witness? The night of the murder. It was the night of the 24th, just after midnight. Yep. Then it's not the 24th anymore if it's after midnight. I was in the restaurant where I rent boats, as usual. And then I heard a bang. Yep. When I looked out on the window, I saw a boat just a floating on the lake. Then I heard another bang. Again with the two bangs. Just, just about then, the boat comes back to shore and a man walks by my window. Hmm, very well. I'd like to begin the cross-examination. What do you mean, dude? <laughs> there is nothing to question than my witness's testimony. Ergo, no need for cross-examination. Besides, there are only ten seconds left before our three minutes are up. Judge, your verdict now! Uh, yes, M Mr. Wright. Of course I'm gonna cross-examine. What are you saying? Of course I'll cross-examine the witness. Mm, very well, you may begin. <laughs> Excuse me, Mr. Von Karma? Three minutes just passed. I see. Well then, let's just take our time. You may cross-examine the witness. <laughs> what is with Mr. Von Karma? We're just going crazy because three minutes passed. What the hell? It was the night of the 24th, just after midnight. Let's press on that, because I want more. Just after midnight, you say? Yep, just around then. Are you sure? Pretty sure, yep. When I talked to you yesterday, you were rather vague about the time. I'm surprised you seemed so sure about it today. And then he just falls asleep. <laughs> I asked him and he remembered. Isn't that right? Mm, don't glare at me like that. I, I remembered it clearly I did, yep. You see, continue. I was in the restaurant where I rent boats as usual. Yeah, might as well. So did anybody rent a boat that day? Is there anyone who can verify that? Well, I guess Polly could. But that's not good enough for a court of law. Mr. Wright, exactly what's not good enough? Uh, Your Honor, this Polly is a parrot. A parrot? Don't be so hard on the girl, Keithy boy. Keith? <laughs> a split second, Keith. The prosecution concedes that we cannot prove the witness was in the shop. Witness, please continue. Huh, he actually conceded a point. Interesting. Then I heard a bang, yep. Let's keep pressing. And where did the bang seem to come from? From the lake, I figure. Are you certain? Uh, yep. Good, continue. When I looked out on the window, I saw a boat just a floating on the lake. Was there someone in the boat? It was pretty far out there. I couldn't see clearly. But I figured there was two men out there, yep. But you couldn't see them clearly? Yep, at the time, that is. At the time? Then I heard another bang. So you heard two gunshots total? Yep. That's what Lotta said in her testimony yesterday. I wonder if that is... I wonder if that's the game's hint to telling me that I should present one of the gun stuff. Because, again, it says that we only have one bullet, and this was fired three times, so I don't know which one I would want to present. What other things do we possibly have? So we have... We have so much evidence. Oh no. Hmm. I wouldn't want to use that to present, because obviously he said that diddly do yeah. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Okay. What information is pertinent to this? Not you, not you, not you, not you. Or does it? At 11.50. After midnight. Or before midnight. Hmm. That's 25 minutes. 
I wonder if the game wants me to present that. It's focusing on the gunshots, though. There. So let's look at it. Just about then, the boat comes back to shore, and a man walks by my window. Who was the man? By your window? Yep, by my window, right outside the window of my little shack. And could you see the man's face? Well, the fog was pretty darn thick, but he was right there in front of me. I saw it. This is a rather important detail. Please add it to your testimony. Tisk, tisk, tisk. I have a bad feeling about this. That man was the defendant. He was saying, I can't believe he's dead. Uh, are you sure? Uh-oh. It's a dad. <laughs> I have to get him to wake up. Dead Sutton Keith. He said, I can't believe he's dead as he was walking by too. Witness, are you sure that the person you saw was Miles Edgeworth? It was him, that Edgeworth boy! Wow, I haven't seen a witness fall during a testimony. This sounds like decisive evidence indeed. I see no room for doubt. Von Karma, he lured me into cross-examining so he could set me up for a fall. Tisk, tisk, tisk. Nick, I don't like the way things are going here. Why, if I forgot you were here. Everyone in the courtroom is glaring at us. I better act quick or this trial is going to be over. Raise an objection. objection. Your Honor, we proved in yesterday's trial that it could not have been Edgeworth who fired that gun. Mr. Wright, are you referring to the fingerprints from Edgeworth's right hand found on the gun and the photograph showing a man firing with his left hand? Exactly! I forgot that happened. That is easily explainable. He could have wiped his fingerprints after he fired. Why would it have the fingerprints from the wrong hand, then? If he is going to have the foresight to wipe a gun, why would there be fingerprints? You are ignoring the truth of the matter here. Everything in my this witness's testimony is true. Hmm. The judge is lost in thought. What should I do? Raise an objection. objection. Your Honor, the witness claims that Edgeworth said, I can't believe he's dead, but his word is all we have. If he were telling a lie. Mr. Wright, in a court of law, the evidence tells all. Apparently, you have yet to realize even this basic fact. If you say his testimony is a lie, show us proof. Uh, Nick, do we have evidence? It's no good. There's nothing I can do. Are you sure? To be honest, I don't know what to do anymore. Please. Hear me, sis. Please. We need your help. Nick needs you. Tisk, tisk, tisk. Three minutes was perhaps too high in expectation. However, 15 minutes isn't bad. This must be a new record. Enough! The witness may leave the stand. But I didn't get to cross-examine him fully. This court sees no reason to further prolong the trial, nor is there any need for the more time to decide the case against the defendant. This case is extremely clear. I see no room for misinterpretation of the facts. What? No! Hmm. This court finds the defendant, Mr. Miles Edgeworth. Really? Was I supposed to show proof there? The accused will surrender to the court immediately, to be held pending trial at a higher court within a month from today's date. That is all. This court is adjourned. So did I... Did I... Did I get it? A game over? Wait! Who said wait? Oh. Uh, well, who was that just now? Me! Huh? Ah! Larry? W what are you doing here? Listen, you gotta listen to me. I... I was... I was there in the park the night of the murder. I, I wasn't sure about it until just yesterday. But today I remembered it! Remembered what? The gunshot! I heard it too! I I I I I did not I did not foresee Larry coming to my rescue. And here I was gonna have throw him under the bus last time. Order! What is the meaning of this? The verdict has been decided. I call for adjournment. One moment, Mr. Von Karma. So you say you heard a gunshot? Yeah, I did. A gunshot that night. 
I was sitting here in the audience listening to the testimony, and I realized something you said was different from what I remember. Anyhow, I can't just sit here and let you call Ed Edgy a murderer. It it's just not right! I'll testify! Let me testify! Good guy Larry! Order! Order! Well, this is the first time something has happened like this in my court. I'm not quite sure how to proceed. Judge, you've already given your decision. The trial is over. Nick, this is it. Larry's given us one final chance. If I was Phoenix in this situation, I would have called into question the fact that there were, like, just to go over my thought process, we have, like, again, like, first off, why would there be fingerprints from his right hand if he used his left hand to fire the gun but then wipe the, the, the diddly deep? Also, that there were two different photos, one at 11.50 and one at 2.15. So the question is, how did these two gunshots apparently happen so far apart, but people heard it, turned, and saw it happen then again? And then again again, there's the fact that we only have one bullet, but the pistol fired three times. Where are the other two bullets? Where was the third gunshot? There's just so much that is so wacky about this whole thing. She's right! If only it wasn't Larry. He could make things even worse. Mr. Edgeworth was just declared guilty, Nick. It doesn't get any worse. You're right. Okay. Your Honor! If there is another witness, it is our duty to hear him speak! Right here, right now! A waste of time. Their verdict cannot be overturned. Hmm. Allow me to speak my opinion. In all court proceedings, it is our duty to prevent an inaccurate verdict. In a world where, uh, this kind of thing has to be wrapped up in three days. In order to make sure no mistake has been made, every witness should be heard. What is this? I withdraw my previous verdict of guilty. I know that my, my judge voice keeps changing. Mr. Von Karma, I order you to call this new witness to testimony. Now! What? The court will adjourn for five minute recess. Your old man voice is on point. Thank you very much. After that, we will hear this new witness. Court is adjourned. I did not foresee Larry coming to the rescue. I still had things I wanted to poke holes in, but I guess the old man's testimony was, like, I guess not there for us. <laughs> but let's see what Larry can add. Ooh, that was too close. Sorry to keep you on the edge of your seat like that, Edgeworth. Hmm. I've seen worse. Yeah, right, Edgeworth. You're just sweating bullets. I just wonder what Larry p plans to say in there. Larry was at the lake that night? Yes. He said he went looking for the steel samurai balloon that flew into the lake. Oh, right. And he found the balloon in and the air tank that night. Yeah. Hey, Edgeworth. Huh? You say something right. Yeah, a lot of things. You seem out of it. What's wrong? It... it's nothing. Hmm? Um, Mr. Edgeworth, there's something I've been meaning to ask you. What's that? Why are your fingerprints on the murder weapon? Oh. <laughs> we never asked him this. We never asked him this. When he fell into the lake, I went into a daze. I couldn't understand what had happened. I couldn't think straight. Then I saw the pistol lying on the floor of the boat in front of me. I picked it up without thinking, which I, I could kind of understand if you're in a state of shock. You're like, what just happened? What's this? What's going on? I didn't have a reason, really. I see. Right. Yeah? This might be our chance. Our chance? Von Karma has only ever run perfect trials. Perfect trials? Perfectly prepared witnesses. Perfectly complete evidence. That's the secret to his success. This is the first time he's ever had to deal with something unexpected. In what, 40 years? How do you do that? Yeah. Must be a demon. He has to let, he has to let someone he hasn't even talked to testify before the court. 
And that someone is Larry. What are you getting at? It's likely his testimony will be full of holes, right? That's right, Nick. No 10 minute trial this time. We'll milk this one for all it's worth. Hey, it was 15 minutes, 15. Everything's on Larry now. Does this mean that I'm gonna have to cross-examine the boy? <laughs> Your Edgeworth is perfect too, thank you very much. That's one of the one of the reasons I really like streaming the Ace Attorney games so far, is because I get to voice act. It is a very fun thing. While also <laughs> while also letting my brain melt when the when the game decides to throw curveballs at me. Court is now back in session. Witness, please testify to the court about everything that you saw on the night of December 24th. Right, leave it to me. Please, Larry, don't mess this one up. I hate to admit it, but you're our last chance. Von Karma didn't even have time to prep his witness. I just hope Edgeworth is right about this being our big break. Although, that would be actually interesting if there was a point where you had to, like, prevent a cross-examination of your witness. But then at the same time, that would be kind of weird. But at the same time, that could be interesting. The night, that night I was out on a boat on the lake. I was looking for something and I uh, found it. So I quietly slipped the boat back in at the rental shop deck. Then I just, then just as I was thinking about going home, I heard this bang. I looked out over the lake, but I didn't see a boat. So after I heard that single gunshot, I went home. One of the funniest moments in Ace Attorney is if you say a piece of evidence is under the judge's beard, he'll give you a double penalty. <laughs> I can see that. He's just like, how dare you say that I'm keeping evidence from the court? That was an unusually vague testimony even for this court. In any case, Mr. Wright, you may begin your cross-examination. Yes, Your Honor. What's wrong, Nick? It's Larry. I have no idea what he's going to say if I press him. I'm a little scared. Hmm... Well, we've come this far. There's no way to go but forward, Nick. That night, I was out on a boat. No need to press that. Hmm. I'm gonna go ahead and press on the main one. Would you blame him? The beard is magnificent. It really is. Where did the sound come from? Yeah, well, I wasn't too sure about that. I looked around, you know. Did you look at the lake? Yeah, I looked. I looked down the lake, but I didn't see a boat. Wasn't there a boat on the lake? Order! Order! Well, Mr. Butts? Whoa, whoa! Everybody just calm down, okay? I mean, it was real foggy that night. I'm not sure whether there was a boat out there or not. Oh, okay, no problem. That's just the most important part of this case. Hmm. When in doubt, press everything. Indeed. Single gunshot, though. So let's see if we press this. He'll, we'll be like, when was this? So you only heard one bang, correct? Yeah. Huh. Well, Nick? Hmm. It was a pretty wishy-washy testimony, wasn't it? I guess I should just start working on the contradictions. Sorry, I wish I could be more helpful. I wish I could call my sister. Hmm. Well, the other things didn't yield much, so let's press. Something wrong, Mr. Wright. There were so many things wrong, I don't know where to begin. Ah. Oh, well, okay. First of all, what time was it? Ooh, this might be important. Oh, it was after 11 when I went out into the boat. By the time everyone had gone home for the night. So I waited until the coast was clear, so to speak. And why were you out in the boat in such a late hour? I was looking for something. Well, we might as well have him admit he got a balloon. Looking for something? Er, uh, yeah. Mr. Bucks, what was it you were looking for? What the witness was searching for is irrelevant. Most likely he was hunting for this Gordy. That's surprisingly close to the truth in a sense. This is all irrelevant. Let's get it over with. I, I forget if we did this one. Around what time was that? Uh, well, let's see. I figured it was out searching for about an hour. I guess it was around 12, yeah? You're not sure? Hey, don't give me that face! I'm not some sort of human sundial, okay? People use watches these days, Larry. All right. So let's see. What information do we have about this? 
I'm trying to think. Hmm. I doubt it has anything to do with him slipping the boat back in. I doubt we have anything to press with the parrot in this situation. Hmm. Her two sounds like gunshots just after midnight. But it, that, that wasn't added, so that's not something that we really could do. Hmm. I don't think... Here's my evidence, shows badge. That would be hilarious if that was actually a thing. I'm actually a lawyer. I'm actually a lawyer. You can't prove I'm not. Let's see. It has to do with the bangs. Her two sounds like gunshots. So maybe we could bring up Lada's deposition. I think that would be smart because the, this has nothing to do with the gun. Technically, this is just about the bangs. So it's either the empty lake photo... But then... So maybe Lada's... Because uh, when I get into this, my brain is just like, Oh no, I am very scared. I do not want to make mistake. Let's see. Try the gun on a statement of one bang. Maybe... But at the same time, Lotta's deposition, I think, would be more pertinent because it was talking about the sounds, and even though we technically have three things relating to the bangs, we have one bullet, we have a pistol that fired three times, and a deposition that says there were two gunshots! Everything is painful. Nope, that one's wrong. This evidence, clearly it reveals. No, it doesn't. I figured it would, because we're talking about two bangs here. Maybe it was supposed to be on this one. So after I heard that single gunshot, I went home. Maybe it's actually this one. Because I feel like this would be important just after midnight. Heard that single one. But at the same time, I already got penalized for this one, so I don't know. Blah, blah, blah. Because that's the problem. He, they mention the bang multiple times, but you don't know which one to do. But I'm gonna go for a Hail Mary! Objection! Okay, so I had the right idea. Wait a sec, Larry! Uh, what? You only heard one bang? You're sure? That's what I said! But Miss Lotta Hart testified yesterday that she heard two bangs. And the old man just now said the same thing. <laughs> They both heard two gunshots that night. Huh? Were you even listening? Were you paying attention at all when they said? Yo, Nick, please! Huh? You know, something's been bothering me. I'm a witness, see? I'm like a customer here. So you gotta treat me nice and stuff, okay? <laughs> so you know when you get a game over, all that happens is defendant gets arrested while in spirit of justice, Phoenix actually dies if you get a game over. Jesus. Harsh? Mr. Butts? What? You only heard one gunshot, are you sure? Um, well, to tell you the truth, I'm not sure. Eh? Not sure? How could you not be sure? Yeah, well, I uh, might have missed the other gunshot. I was uh, listening to something else. Something else? My radio, dude, with my headphones. God damn it, Larry. What? Uh, the pain, the pain. Order, order, and stop that booing! <laughs> oh, somebody was booing? Mr. Butts, you were listening to the radio with your headphones? Yeah, so what? That's a crime. I listen to my radio. Everybody listens to the radio. What's the big deal? Hmm, Mr. Von Karma, your opinion. Waste of time. I do not accept this witness nor his shoddy testimony. Because every de defendant is sentenced to death, and any sentence is also applied to their defense attorney. Yeesh. Hmm. Well, Mr. Wright, should he continue the testimony? Continue. Your Honor, please, please allow the witness to continue his testimony. Bah. Nothing is more pitiful than a lawyer who doesn't know when he's lost. Very well, Mr. Butts. Please give your testimony and be sure to include details like your radio. Right. Leave it to me. I wouldn't if there were any other way out of this. Believe me. What Larry heard. 
it's lonely being alone on Christmas Eve. That's why I was listening to an all-request show on the radio, see? I was listening to real boomin' loud, like, but I'm sure I heard that gunshot. I remember exactly what the DJ was saying when I heard it, too. That's gotta be important. That's gotta be important. That's gotta be him saying, it's come on, like Christmas. We were listening to your radio at a high volume. Yeah, what's the big problem? Can't a man listen to his radio in peace? Isn't this a free country? I truly believe Larry has no idea what the problem here is. Judge, can you believe a word this witness says? What he heard was probably nothing more than a drum beat from the radio. True enough, it is difficult to believe this testimony. But I still want to cross-examine. Wait, Your Honor. The witness said he remembers exactly what the DJ said when he heard the gunshot. Excuse me? DJ? An announcer. The guy who says things on the radio. Anyway, what this means is when he heard the music, sound, no music was playing. The DJ only talks between songs, so he could have heard the gunshot from the lake. I'd like to cross-examine the witness, Your Honor. Look very well, Mr. Wright. I can't believe I'm continuing this charade. When in doubt, turn about everything. Yeah. So he's alone, don't think... Ah, let's press. <laughs> Nowadays, those people are called talk show hosts. <laughs> Indeed. So, you turn on the radio. Right! I just wanted to hear someone's voice, you know? You don't know what it's like out there alone on Christmas Eve, alone! I shouldn't have said anything. That's why I was listening to an All Request radio show. I remember exactly. Let's see. What did he say? What did she say? Mr. Wright, please cease these pointless questions. What possible good could knowing what a radio DJ said do us? Indeed, Mr. Von Karma has a point. I'll allow the question only if you see some reason why we should care. We should care. We should care, Your Honor. Of course we should. Why? Uh, well, how do you know if we don't ask, hmm? Fine, very well. Mr. Butts, please testify to the court. What was the radio announcer saying when you heard the gunshot? Just when she said, hey, it's almost Christmas, I heard the gunshot. Are you sure? Of course I am. She said this real sexy voice. Hmm, maybe Von Karma was right. I'm not sure how this helped us. I do. This is the most ludicrous testimony I have ever heard. But there is one gleaming ray of hope in there. I've got to press it until we get the bottom of what happened. Unless the game wants me to press more. Which I suppose is possible. I'll press on everything else, and then I'll present the evidence I think is important, which is this. Where it says it's almost... Well, actually, but at the same time he said maybe I should press more, and now the, 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 the game has me paranoid, okay? <laughs> gotcha, the statement is the contradiction. Indeed. I mean, I guess I could, but again, the game the game said he wanted to press more, but... Ah, we saved, so let's go ahead and... All right. Because this is the important thing. Larry, are you absolutely sure what you're saying is correct? Huh? What's with that face? You look scary, dude. Hey, if you're trying to scare me, you better... No, I don't scare that easy. Is something the matter, Mr. Wright? Your Honor, did you hear what the witness just said? DJ said it's almost Christmas when he heard the gunshot. Indeed, and almost Christmas means it wasn't Christmas. Do you realize what this means? When he heard the gunshot, it was still Christmas Eve. That would seem to be the case, yes. But he should have heard the gunshot after midnight. This photograph is ir photographed. This photograph is irrefutable proof of this fact. Let's see what the time was on the photo taken when the gun triggered Miss Hart's camera. 12.25.015. 15. 15 minutes after midnight on Christmas Day. This is a clear contradiction, Your Honor. Except uh, for the empty lake one, which was 25 minutes before. Order! Order! What does this mean? The two prior witnesses heard gunshots after midnight. However, this witness says he heard gunshot before midnight. Judge, the answer is simple. The current witness is plainly mistaken. Just look at him, suspicious. What? Hmm. Well, Mr. Wright, what do you think about him? Larry's right. Larry's not mistaken, Your Honor. He heard the gunshot before midnight. Intriguing. 
I'm assuming you have evidence for this wild claim. Aha, uh -huh, you bet your ass I do, you old schmuck. Show me evidence there was a gunshot before midnight. It's right here. Look at this photograph. Look at this photograph! This was taken by our witness yesterday, Miss Lotta Hart with her automatic camera. The timestamp on the photo reads December 24th, 1150. Oh? Hmm. But there's nothing on the lake in this picture. Your Honor, the real issue here is not why nothing is shown in the photograph, it's why this photograph exists at all. What do you mean? Your Honor, this photograph was taken by an automatic camera. That camera was set to go off in response to loud noises. Aha! Correct! There was a loud noise on the lake at 11.50. But this... That is why this photograph was taken. In other words... When Larry heard that gunshot, it was most definitely still Christmas Eve. Indeed, it would seem that this is the case. Then where does that leave us? Miss Hart testified that she heard the gunshot after midnight. Are you claiming she was mistaken? Not at all, Your Honor. It's a, it is a fact the camera also triggered at 15 minutes after midnight. Your Honor, that night there were two sets of gunshots with a 25 minute pause between them. Which is very suspicious, highly suspicious. Why would this be? Don't be fooled, Judge. That camera was set to respond to loud noises. Yes? There is no proof that the loud noise at 11.50 was a gunshot. Why, the witness could have sneezed triggering the camera. Hey, my nose clear that night, man, clear! Hmm, well, Mr. Wright, there's no turning back now. Can you prove that the loud noise at 11.50 was indeed a gunshot? Please show the court evidence if you have any. Hmm. More than likely, it's the camera again. It could be the gun, though, because it fired three times. Or it could be the camera because we have had first-hand experience with the fact that it only went off with a popper and then went off with a sneeze later after it was modified. I don't know which one's the right one, though. Because we could say, hey, this was fired three times. Is it the gun or is it the camera? Because the obvious answer is the camera, due to the fact that we've had first-hand experience with it, with the poppers and the sneeze. Mr. Wright, is that a smirk I see? Uh, Your Honor, sorry, I wasn't really sure about the evidence. I was. So I guess it has to be the gun. But I thought our first-hand experience would be important. This is my evidence. The murder weapon? Something about this pistol was bothering me, Your Honor. Both of the witnesses who testified yesterday heard two gunshots. However, the murder weapon was fired three times. When, then, was the last shot fired? Only now have I realized the truth. That third shot was the shot Larry heard just before midnight. Order! Order! Hmm. That would make sense of the evidence we've seen so far. However, this leaves me wondering exactly what did happen that night on the lake. I imagine everyone Phoenix got a penalty. I imagine everyone Phoenix got a penalty. He would actually get hurt. <laughs> Basically, like Von Karma throwing a rock at him. Haha, <laughs> you fool! You got a penalty! Exactly. If this is the case, there were two sets of gunshots separated by 25 minutes. One at 11.50, another at 15 minutes after midnight. Why, I ask you, why? Uh oh, I'd better think of something quick. Wait a second. Gunshots separated by 25 minutes? Ah! What's wrong, Nick? I have it! I have it! Huh? Remember the case of the Steel Samurai? Huh? Yeah, of course I remember. The murderer in this case had the same idea as the murderer in that case. What do you mean? Maya! Yes? If we don't figure this out now, we'll never overturn Archworth's guilty verdict. I've got a hunch and I'm going to run with it. Right, I mean, is this safe? Safe? We've already gotten a guilty verdict. We have nothing to lose. You just watch and let me know if I say anything that sounds fishy, okay? Go ahead and save. Paranoidly. Right, Nick. Your Honor. Yes, Mr. Wright. 
The testimony just now has cleared up this entire case. What do you mean, Mr. Wright? Tisk, tisk, tisk. So you finally realize the truth. There can be no other murderer other than Edgeworth himself. Wrong, Von Karma. A man was shot that night, but it wasn't Edgeworth who did the shooting. Listen, rookie. Take a deep breath and consider the facts. At the time of the murder, one boat was on the lake. This is shown by the witness's photograph. The defendant, Edgeworth, and the victim, Robert Hammond, were on that boat. There was a gunshot fired on that boat and Robert Hammond fell into the lake. The distance of the shooting was one meter. It couldn't have been suicide. Well... The guilty party has to be the other man on that boat. I admit it is hard to imagine any other possibility. Yes, but this assumes that the victim was shot at 15 minutes after midnight. What do you mean by that, Mr. Wright? We have a photo... We have photographic evidence of the time of the shooting. The timestamp on the photo says 15. But Larry heard a gunshot 25 minutes before that. Robert Hammond was killed then, 25 minutes before the shot on the lake. That's the only way that Edgeworth could be innocent. Mr. Wright, are you quite mad? Explain who the two men on the boat are. Edgeworth and the murderer. Let's see. Edgeworth and Hammond is definitely out. The murderer and Hammond, no, because Wright is arguing that this is indeed... No. My mind would be that Edgeworth was in there first. He was on the boat with the murderer in, in uh, the shot that... No, but that... No, because Edgeworth did... Hmm. Da, 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 da. I'm trying to think it through. Because Phoenix is saying that Edgeworth was in the boat at 11.50, and the first shot happened. And then later, the murderer and Hammond were on a boat 25 minutes later. My thoughts are that it was the opposite. That the murderer and Hammond were on the boat at 11.50. But at the same time, there's a reason why the murderer won it on picture, right? Explain who the two men are. I'm gonna say Edgeworth and the murderer. Of course, it was Edgeworth and the murderer. After the murderer killed Robert Hammond at 11.50, he assumed the guise of Mr. Hammond and met Edgeworth. What? Are you serious? Yes. Edgeworth won't tell us why he went to the lake that night. However, I have a hunch. That night, Robert Hammond called Edgeworth to the lake. Now, Edgeworth didn't know Robert Hammond's face that well. That's why he didn't suspect anything when the murderer took Robert Hammond's place. I'm not sure what to make of all of this. Ludicrous! Mr. Wright, tell us the name of the murderer, then. The murderer's name? Right, it's... I don't know. Actually, I don't know the murderer's name. You don't know? Bah, again you waste my time. I don't know because he never told us! Huh? The murderer is the caretaker of the boat shop. That old man! At 11.50, he was the one who killed Robert Hammond. The caretaker of the boat shop? Where did he do this? There weren't any boats on the lake then. Why would he have to go all the way out on the lake just to shoot someone? May I suggest that the real scene of the crime was not on a boat? What? Well then, where did the murder take place? Show the judge where the murder really took place. Huh. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know where the murder would take place. It can't have been here, 
because a lot of heart was there. It can't have been here at the boat. It could have been inside the boat shop. It could have been inside the boat shop, couldn't it have? That, and that would explain how he was able to hear it. Here, of course, the boat shop where he lives. That way he could meet with the victim without anyone seeing. Do you have proof that the boat shop was the scene of the crime? Recall Larry's testimony, if you will. I like how they animated the boat going around. That night, he was out on the lake in a boat searching for something. He finds it and returns the boat. Then just as he's starting to head for home, he hears a gunshot. He heard a gunshot, Your Honor, even though he was wearing headphones at the time. In other words, the gunshot was very, very close by. And where would that be if he had just returned a boat? The boat shop! <laughs> Mr. Wright, what happened that night on Gord Lake? Please tell the court from the beginning. Yes, Your Honor. Nick, are you sure about this? I'm not really, but I think if I start at the very beginning, and I take it slow, I might be able to just figure this out. That night, the caretaker of the boat shop called Robert Hammond to his shop. <laughs> that face! <laughs> this was around 11.50. That was when the gunshot that Larry heard was fired. Oh! And that would also explain why the, uh... Why uh, a lot of hearts know? Because a lot of hearts thing did go off. It was pretty close by, but it would also maybe be just muted enough that a lot of hearts equipment wouldn't have picked up, or like a lot of heart equipment would have picked up that shot, but not have picked up the. But she herself wouldn't have heard the shot. I think that makes sense. After that, the caretaker put on Robert Hammond's coat. He became Robert Hammond. Then he got on the boat with Edgeworth and went out into the middle of the lake. Then who fired the pistol on the boat with Mr. Wright? The boat shop, caretaker. Of course it was the murderer who shot the pistol. He shot twice. Both missed Edgeworth on purpose. Wait a minute. Yes? Why would he shoot twice if he didn't mean to hit anyone? Uh, details, details. Know this, Mr. Wright. The moment you run out of explanations is the moment you lose. Tell us why the murderer shot twice. To create a witness. I believe he shot twice to create a witness, Your Honor. Create a witness? The murderer lifts his pistol and fires one shot. That ensures that anyone who heard the shot would look at the lake. Indeed, Mr. Hart did exactly that after hearing the first shot. Next, the murderer waits a bit and he fires again. Then, he falls into the lake. The murderer jumps from the boat himself, leaving the pistol in the boat behind him. I see. To someone looking from the edge of the lake, it would appear that one of the men on the boat had shot the other. The murderer didn't know about the automatic camera, of course. That's why he shot twice to draw attention to the boat. Hmm. Once you realize that everything falls... Once you realize that, everything else falls into place. The boat shop caretaker swam back to his shop. Then he put Mr. Hammond's wet coat back on the body, and he threw the body into the lake. This is what happened, Your Honor. These are the events that transpired that night on Gord Lake. <laughs> the dot 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 always gets me. Bailiff, bring out the witness from before. The boat shop caretaker, quickly! I mean, it makes sense. Very well. While we are waiting for the caretaker, I would like to ask the defendant, Miles Edgeworth, a few questions. Mr. Edgeworth, please take the stand. Mr. Edgeworth, you heard what the defense has said. Yes. Well, why did you go to the lake that night? What Wright has said was mostly correct. Astonishingly so, actually. Yes. Several days ago, I received a letter. The letter was signed Robert Hammond. He asked me to come to the boat shop by the lake at midnight on Christmas Eve. He said he had something very important to discuss with me. Something important? I'm sorry, I can't say what it was. Hmm. Your Honor, sir! 
Bailiff, we are conducting a trial here. I ask that you remain quiet. The witness has disappeared. He isn't at the boat shop either. What? What should I do? F find him quickly. We cannot allow him to get away. Well, that's a that's a turn of events. Mr. Von Karma, your witness has disappeared. A search warrant has already been issued. Hmm. It goes without saying that I cannot declare a verdict under these circumstances. I will extend the trial until tomorrow, the final day allowed. I request that the police department utilize all its forces to find the witness. Am I understood? One more thing. Just who is that boat shop caretaker? I think his identity has become very important to this trial. Eh, 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 see, Mr. Von Karma? It's almost like identities are important or something! I want him, and I want to know who he is. Very well. Court is adjourned. Whew! I think I took the most penalties there on that one that I have so far. Mostly because it was just like, which evidence do I put? Because both of them made sense to me, but I suppose the gun did make the most sense in that situation. But at the same time, we literally had the moment of Maya setting it off while sneezing the camera with the automatic diddle -dee. Yeah. Yay, Nick, you did it! Yeah, well, at least we got out from under that guilty verdict. And what about Larry? That was something else. Even Von Karma didn't know what to do with his testimony. Nobody did. Larry really helped us out. Sure, once I sifted through his unique testimony. I wonder if Wright ever runs into a... Do they ever explain what Phoenix's hobbies are? Not so far. We know that he... <laughs> we know that he doesn't watch television like uh, the Steel Samurai unless pressured into it. And eating hamburgers, I guess. But I wonder if Phoenix ever has run it, like, in the future games, ever runs into a, like, a cross-examination that helps his testimony, like, against a, a verdict that he doesn't have to cross-examine at all. They just lay it out. He doesn't have to put anything forward. That'd be kind of hilarious. Still, he did save us. I just wish our cases weren't so down to the wire all the time. I know what you mean. Sometimes I feel like it's us on the trial instead of our clients. Well, if my if my chat is anything to go by, that is what happens in one of the games. <laughs> hey, Edgeworth. Um, Mr. Edgeworth? D did you say something? Don't look so pained. I mean, it looks like you're probably going to get off the hook. You could try to smile just a little. Relax. I'm sorry, but I fear it's not over for me yet. W what do you mean? Right. There's something that's been troubling me for a long time now. And I don't know whether or not to tell you. Edgeworth? No, there's so little time left. I want to tell you to get it off my chest, but... Hmm, I can't make up my mind. What is this about, Edgeworth? It's a nightmare I've had. The only thing he is known for is plunging toilets. Ouch. A memory of a crime. That I committed. A crime you committed? A memory of a murder. Well, <laughs> to be continued. Because, of course. Gotta have those cliffhangers. <laughs> oh, well, these trials are very draining. But they're very fun. And we're gonna continue, because... Jesus Christ, that was an hour-long testimony dive. Uh. Ah, the classic music. What was Mr. Edgeworth talking about? A memory of a crime that I committed. A memory of a murder. Do you really think Mr. Edgeworth killed? I don't believe it. Not Edgeworth. Some painful memory has been troubling him recently, but he'd never take someone's life. Never. <laughs> Nick? Yo! How's everyone doing? What do you think of my performance today? I had him swoon into the aisles, huh, Maya? S swooning? Me? Oh, oh yes, I do remember feeling faint. 
<laughs> right on. Tell me the truth. It was like love at first sight, right? Right, Nick? Huh? Me? I, uh, well, maybe my heart skipped a beat or two. I think you can do better than that. Come on, I saved Edgeworth in there, dude. You guys should be bowing before me, yeah? Bow before your hero. Today's trial. Larry, you really helped in the trial today. You did. If you weren't there, Larry, I'm sure Edgeworth would have been found guilty. <laughs> but seriously, Nick, that boat shop caretaker guy is pretty suspicious. But Edgy ain't off the hook yet. Way to spoil the mood, Larry. Hey, I'm just a guy sitting in the audience, you know? From where I was sitting, Edgy seemed pretty edgy. I mean, can you really know he's telling the truth about that night? Nick? I don't know, but what I do know is I'm going to believe in you and <laughs> you two until the end. Us two? Edgeworth and who else? You mean me, right? <laughs> nah, he means me. Right, Nick? Yeah, you, Larry. Not me. But, but why you, Larry? Huh? Um, actually, yeah. Why me, Nick? <laughs> Enough of the silent treatment. <laughs> it's Larry. She's 17. Ah, <laughs> uh, poor Larry. He can't catch a break. Why do you trust Mr. Edgeworth so much? I mean, he's changed recently, true. But when he first met him, he was kind of a jerk, don't you think? You didn't know him back then. Back when he wanted to become a defense attorney. Wait, was that when you two were in classmates? Yes. In grade school, they saved me. Miles and Larry. They saved me and I'll never forget it. That's why I became a defense attorney. What? Hey, 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 Larry, what's he talking about? Huh? Oh, um, uh, sorry, I kind of forgot. Hmm. <laughs> Okay, Nick, out with it. I'm going to hear this story today, and that's final. Okay, okay. It's kind of a long story, so hang in there. No, check Maya's age on her bio. Well, we can do that. <laughs> yep, age 17. Meanwhile, 23. Uh, weirdo, weirdo, Larry. Then again, also a Japanese game, so double who knows. From 2001. It was the very end of third grade. I was on trial. A class trial. A class trial? The class trial. You remember, Larry? Spring, end of third grade? A kid in our class got his lunch money stolen. Lunch money? Our school was really small. Every month, kids would bring in an envelope with money for lunch from home. Huh, I see. Anyway, this kid's envelope disappeared, with $38 still inside. And considering that this is children speak, that's like a thousand dollars. Oh, yeah. Now that you mention it, I do remember. I can see why you'd, why you'd forget, though. You were out of school that day. Anyway, that envelope had been stolen during P.E. class. I was coming down with a cold, so I'd skip P.E. that day. I was the only one not in class. So they thought you did it? Yeah. The kids in class said I should be put on trial. Trial? So the next day, we held a classroom trial with me as the defendant. Yeah, that's not traumatizing or nothing. Actually, did you know the first place to legalize gay marriage was the Netherlands in the year 2000? Huh. Fun facts, the more you know. I... I didn't do it! Guilty, he did it! Guilty, it was you, thief! <laughs> they just keep do going, yeesh. Isn't this where the judge says order in the court? This seems like a very kangaroo court. You're a terrible teacher, lady. Now, Phoenix, you know you shouldn't steal people's money. It's not right. In the end, even the teacher thought I'd done it. Go over and apologize, Phoenix. I, I didn't know what was happening. I was so sad I couldn't stop crying. Everyone was staring at me like I'd done it. I tried to apologize and went to where the boy whose money had been stolen was sitting. That's when it happened. OBJECTION! He shouldn't have to apologize. The only thing that belongs in a trial is evidence. Anything else has no place. You should all be ashamed, amateurs. M miles <laughs> He even looks normal. He looks like a little Edgeworth. It wasn't you who stole my money, was it? 
And of course, of course it was Edgeworth as well, whose money was stolen. That's hilarious. No. No. Then you shouldn't apologize. Everyone's been shouting you did it, but no one has any proof. That is why, Your Honor, this boy is innocent. But, but Miles, it was your money that was stolen. Yeah, he did it. He's the one. We don't need proof. Why don't you all just shut up? <laughs> why does he look like a ballerina in this picture? This is always how it, everybody gang how it is. Everybody ganging up and picking on one person. Just think how he feels. He said he didn't do it, so he didn't do it. Very well. I will replace the money myself. This class trial is over. Wow, wow, Teach. If you don't have the the cojones to like hold through and like I think this child did it, then you shouldn't do it. If you really, really did think he was the guilty, you would have said, no, no, he did it. Some conviction you have. That's how it happened. After that, the three of us were the best of friends. Wow, I had no idea. Yeah, I had no idea either. I mean, I forgot. That's when I learned what it meant to be alone. What really screwed up is the fact Larry did steal the money. Ah! <laughs> uh... Larry, never change. Totally alone without a friend in the world. You did a good thing, Larry. Uh, yeah, well, I was just lucky that I took the day off from school. If I'd been there, they would have thought I'd done it. So I took it kind of personally, see? When something smells, it's usually the butts. After the trial. Anyway, Edgeworth and I talked after the class trial. That's when I heard his father was a defense attorney. I remember his eyes uh, would shine when he talked about his father. I'm going to become a defense attorney just like my father. A famous defense attorney. And then he became a famous <laughs> prosecutor. And a few months later, he suddenly transferred to another school. The DL6 incident. Right. I'm not sure, but the transfer probably had to do with his father's death. That's so sad. It was several years later when I heard Edgeworth's name again. There was an article about him in the newspaper. The headline was something like, Dark Suspicions of a Demon Attorney. Fabricating evidence, manipulating testimonies, covering up facts. The article said he'd do anything to get a, ver gui uh, to get a guilty verdict. Anything. But why? What happened? I mean, that's not the edgy I used to know at all. That's what I thought, too. I tried to get in touch with him, but I don't know how many times. He never replied. I guess he didn't want to see his old friends. I couldn't just drop it, though. I wanted to meet him, to learn why he had become who he became. Remember to stay hydrated. <laughs> Especially as you keep talking, talking, talking for like an hour and a half. Hydration is very important. That's when I decided. Wait, you don't mean... That's why? That's why you became a defense attorney? To meet Edgeworth? If I was a defense attorney, I knew he'd have to meet me whether he wanted to or not. In court. Edgeworth believed in me. I believe in him. He's in pain. No one's on his side. I'm the only one who knows the real Edgeworth. I'm the only one who can help him. Oh, Nick. So, is that why you helped me out for free? Um, yes. I helped you because I believed in you. Except I don't remember saying I'd do it for free. <laughs> I... Phoenix X Edgeworth. Well, there was the... There was the whole frame of Edgeworth saying, Phoenix, you coming back into my life has settled me with unfamiliar feelings. <laughs> Classic. Aw, Nick! Nick! Nick, we have to save Mr. Edgeworth if it's the last thing we do, okay? Right. It very well may be. Where's there's that rental boat shop caretaker? We need to find out who or what he is. I'd settle for who. I guess I can clean out some of his, this evidence I no longer need. Okay, let's go. What evidence did we purge? So we got rid of the camera, which is understandable, and all things related to Gordy. Ah, and even the Lot of Hearts testimony. Good, good. 
ba ba ba. We can go to Grossberg. Let's say hi to Grossberg. Why not? Let's say hi to Grossberg. He's out again. When does he work anyway? Now, now, don't be harsh. Guess we'll have to come back later. Either that means come back later or, like, come back never. Well, let's go talk to Edgeworth. We didn't get rid of the dead body in our pocket. <laughs> no, we did not. <laughs> you look as grim as always. <laughs> uh, Mr. Edgeworth, I heard this story about the class trial. Class trial? What do you mean? You don't remember? No, I don't. Your lunch money was stolen, wasn't it? In third grade? Lunch money. Oh, oh right. Yes, I seem to remember something like that. Nick, I think you're the only one who really remembers. <laughs> well, it probably only really mattered to me anyway. Mr. Edgeworth, didn't you know? That trial was the reason Nick became a defense attorney. Ridiculous. Gee, thanks. That said, it does sound like the kind of thing you'd do. You haven't changed a bit, have you, right? So simple. To a fault, even. Well, maybe, yeah, but... I think you changed too much, Edgeworth. Perhaps. Why prosecute? Hey, Edgeworth, why did you become a prosecutor anyway? You used to look up to your dad. You said you wanted to be a defense attorney, right? I couldn't let myself deny reality like you. What do you mean? My father was taken from me. And you want me to defend criminals? I'm sorry, right, but I'm not that good of a person. One suspect was apprehended in your father's murder, right? Yes. The man trapped in the elevator with my father. His name was Yanni Yogi. Well, now that we have the name, that's gotta be important. He had to be the shooter any way you look at it. Yet, he was found innocent. That defense attorney got him off the hook. That would be Robert Hammond. And that gives you one hell of a murder motive, man. On that day, 15 years ago, the three of us were trapped in that elevator for five hours. When we were rescued, we all suffered oxygen deprivation. I had lost all memory of the murder. Lost your memory? Even now, I can't recall what happened in that elevator. That was the crux of Yogi's attorney's argument in court. He claimed Yanni Yoki had been not of sound mind due to the oxygen deprivation. Phoenix Wright had his own anime. I do remember that. Or at least hearing about that. From what I hear, it was decent. Like, uh, at least I didn't hear any complaints about it. Apparently, all the prosecutors and lawyers could airbend. <laughs> Yogi was released due to a lack of evidence. Innocent. That's when I changed my mind. I started to hate defense attorneys. Pr Prosecutor Von Karma. What's your relationship with Von Karma? He is my teacher and a man who deserves respect. I learned everything I know of courtroom techniques from him. So he's like my sister was to you, Nick. He is a perfectionist in all things. Yeah, they could even su uh, even the suspects could airbend. Hilarious. Uh, you, you gotta love anime that's just like, hey, let's have fun. In court, in his personal life, he is obsessed with doing everything perfectly. Perfectly, huh? In all the cases he has taken on, none were left unsolved. And not one suspect was declared innocent. Ever. But, but that's... I know. It's possible some of the suspects were indeed innocent. However, it is impossible for us to accurately determine that in every case. All Von Karma does is his job to find the suspect guilty perfectly. In any case, it's nigh well impossible to find a weakness in him. Should a weakness appear, he would do everything in his power to make it go away. Ah, uh, Medgeworth, if what you're saying is true, you're headed for a guilty sentence tomorrow. He's right! How's not the time to praise the enemy, Edgeworth? Hmm. It's a strange situation in which I find myself, I'll admit. No kidding. Do we have anything worth bringing up? I don't think so. If 
that's all, then we shall head to the Criminal Affairs Department. Yeah, let's go to the Criminal Affairs Department. See if they Gumshoe has any lead on the runaway man. Hmm, looks like Detective Gumshoe hasn't gotten back yet. Gumshoe, he won't be back to, uh, he won't be coming back today. Oh, really? He said there was some guy he had to arrest by tomorrow. That boat shop caretaker. He shouted something about catching him if it's the last thing I do, pal. Good thing, good luck, Gumshoe. He brings out the parrot in his pocket. <laughs> yes, it's just like a magic trick. Hey, Edgeworth, would you take a look at this parrot? <laughs> I'm Polly! Gord like entrance. Hey, pal! Long time no see. Oh, Detective Gumshoe! Close one day, eh? I got so worked up I snapped my tie in half. Uh, sorry about that. <laughs> no problem, pal. Thanks to you, we know who really did it. You mean the boat shop caretaker? Look, I'll take make you a promise. I'll have that scoundrel in my custody by trial time tomorrow. Come what may, it's my duty to you as a police officer. Now, I'm off to catch me a criminal. Detective Gumshoe sure is active today. Oh, one other thing. I feel like they should close boat shops in the winter. It depends on where you are and where the lake is located. Because sometimes, well, at least back before the weather decided to say fuck it to everything, but normally some places would still be prime boating uh, on a lake. Even if it was cold, it wouldn't freeze, maybe. Who knows? It's all about location, location, location. Yeah. No one can go into the woods today. The woods? Where Lotta was camping. The woods are off limits to camping and apparently the park ranger found out. He got pretty mad. Now no one can go in for a while. I guess Lotta's in a lot of trouble. Anyway, I'll be seeing you tomorrow. Well, let's go to the public beach. We just can't go to where <laughs> Lotta was. Anymore. Huh? The steel eyesore is missing. Eyesore? Looks like the hot dog stand is closed, too. I guess Larry's too busy worrying about Mr. Edgeworth to show up for work. <laughs> I guess he would want to take down his big inflatable diddly-d. If it... <laughs> if the thing already flew away once, he wouldn't want it to flow, fly away again. Boat rental shop. That old caretaker got away. Yep. I never imagined he might be the real murderer. Ah, him! Ah, is it Grossberg? I'd know that clearing of the throat anywhere. Aha, hello. What might you be doing here? Out for a walk, hmm? Ah, uh, the days of my youth lack the scent of a fresh lemon, you see. Mr. Grossberg, there's no time for idle reminiscing. Mr. Edgeworth's trial ends tomorrow. Uh, that is true, yes. But from what I saw of today's trial, Edgeworth should be fine, right? Surprisingly, Mia doesn't show up in the 3D games. Huh, that is odd. Well, I'm not so sure about that. Oh, <laughs> what do you mean by that? Well, I'm not sure. Hmm. If you find anything out, come by my office at once. I may be able to offer you some assistance. Thanks. Bye. What do you think Mr. Grossberg was doing here anyway? Who knows? Maybe he came to kind of think over the death of somebody who used to work for him. Granted, he barely remembered him, so who knows. Ooh, maybe we can open up the diddly dee. The safe. Nobody's home. Hello! Hello! <coughs> hey, it's Polly! I wonder where your owner's gone, Polly. Hello! Hello! <coughs> I can't believe he'd run off and leave his poor parrot to fend for herself. Hello! Hello! <coughs> Is he hiding under the table? Everything's cold. Looks like he didn't turn his heater on. I guess he hasn't been here since the trial. Well, first, let's... Well, first, first, let's talk to Polly, because obviously the safe is important. Maybe I should take care of Polly, Nick. Probably shouldn't just kidnap her. The police know about her anyway. I'm sure they'll do something. Since everyone's name is a pun, does that mean Edgeworth is depressed? Huh. Probably. He wonders if he's worth the edge. Sorry, Polly. He says I can't take you. Great. Now the bird's going to hate you. No bird's going to hate me. That reminds me, Nick. Polly here knows the number to the safe, right? 
Yeah, that's right. Polly, what's the number to the safe? One, two, two, eight. Ah! That, let's open it, Nick. I'm sure there isn't any money in any. I'm sure there isn't any money in there. Aww. But hey, he keeps it locked, right? So there must be something of value in there. I'm not so sure. Okay, Nick, let's see what's in here. I guess there might be a clue or two. The only thing in here is a letter. A letter? Aw, boring. And there's no name or signature on this thing. It's handwritten in very precise, clear letters. Get your revenge on Miles Edgeworth. Edgeworth! Nick! Why would Mr. Edgeworth's name be on this? How should I know? I'm gonna read the whole thing. Let's get reading. Get your revenge on Miles Edgeworth. It also says, this is your last chance. Now is the time to get revenge on the two men who ruined your life. The rest of the letter goes on to describe the murder plot in detail. How to kill Robert Hammond and frame Edgeworth. Calling Edgeworth out to the lake, getting on the boat, firing twice? This is exactly what I figured out in t today in court. It's all here, in perfect detail. <coughs> what do you think it means, Nick? I don't know, but it looks like these are instructions for that caretaker. When he killed Robert Hammond and called out Edgeworth, he was following instructions. But who could have written that letter? And what does it mean to get revenge on Miles Edgeworth? Look, I don't know, okay? But one thing's for certain. This letter is an amazing clue. Letter from the safe, added to the court record. Let's see what the uh, court has to say about this. Get your revenge on Miles Edgeworth. There's no details of murder and setup. There's nothing left in the safe. I wonder why the caretaker didn't take the letter with him. He left in a hurry, right? I don't think he even came back here after the trial. Anything else, Polly? Nope, nothing else from Polly. I'm gonna head to Grossberg's then. And be like, hey, Grossberg, what you think of this? I, I, my brain, I don't know why the movement messes me up sometimes. And my brain is like, oh, I have to go down to go somewhere else. Well, first, let's go to, um, I think the all right office. One day left, Nick. Yeah, I know. Well, no time to waste. Let's get going. I know. I just wanted to see if I could go to Grossberg. Edgeworth doesn't wear his badge in his shirt. He has it in his pocket. Huh, interesting. And Grossberg isn't here, how dare you? Well, let's go to the detention center. We have evidence. A plot against you. Edgeworth, see this letter? Hmm? This came out of the safe in the shack where that boat rental caretaker lives. I see. Revenge. On me. Who is that old guy anyway? I... I don't know. Could he be an innocent defendant you got declared guilty or something? Nice, right. But I don't remember that old map. Not at all. So he was following this letter then. Which means there was someone else behind it. Now is the time to get revenge on the two men who ruined my li your life. Two men. Meaning myself and Robert Hammond. It also says this is your last chance. Last chance? Wait, maybe... Maybe he's talking about the statute of limitations on the DL6 incident. Wait. Wait, that old man. What is it? Do you know who he is? Yogi. Could he be Yogi? Yogi? The suspect on the DL6 incident. The one who was found innocent. So, he got declared innocent and then disappeared. And then became a... brain-damaged boatman. Yanni Yogi was a court bailiff at the time. He was just happened to be in the elevator together 15 years ago. And then the earthquake happened. Collapsed a part of the court, trapped you in an elevator. And the quake was incredibly strong. Before I knew it, everything was dark. We were there for so long, it felt like forever. The air thinned, and the darkness closed in on us in that little box. We became unsettled. Help! I can't breathe! Quiet! I said quiet! You're not making this any easier! I want to get out! Help! Get us out! Don't shout! You'll just use up more oxygen! A stressful situation, to say the least. And that's all I remember. When I came to, I was in a hospital bed, staring up at the ceiling. 
In court, Yanni Ogi's mental condition was called into question. They claimed the oxygen deprivation and stress had caused him temporary insanity. In the end, the claim passed the court, and Yoki was found innocent. Huh, but isn't that strange? This letter tells him to get revenge on Edgeworth. Why would he want to take revenge on you? Right. Yeah? There's something that's been troubling me these last few days. I didn't know whether you, whether or not I should tell you. You mean the nightmare? It's a nightmare I've had. A memory of a crime that I committed. A crime you committed? A memory of a murder. I think... I think the time has come to tell all. The nightmare. For the last 15 years, I've had the same dream almost every night. I wake up in a fearful sweat every time. What kind of dream? It's a dream about my father's killing in the dark. Help! I can't breathe! Quiet! I said quiet! You're not making this any easier! I want to get out! Help! Get us out! Don't shout! You'll just use up more oxygen! I... I can't breathe! You're, you're using up my air! What? Stop breathing my air! I'll, I'll stop you! Ah, what? What are you... Stop breathing my air! No, father! He's attacking father! Then I see the pistol lying by my feet. Why is the Steel Samurai so relevant in every case? I don't know. It just, it's hilarious because the Steel Samurai is like the one case that isn't wrapped up in this whole thing to some degree. Because the first case is like, just like, oh, you and Maya. Or, yeah, you and you, uh, you and Maya. And then the second case is about, like, kind of related to the DL6 incident because Mr. Red White of Blue Corp uh, got the information that helped free the dude or at the very least didn't free the dude it just brought suspicion upon like the police as well as shamed Mia and Maya's mother but he was tied to the DL6 incident all the same and then then there's just the samurai case that has like nothing to do with anything else but it still seeps into everything else somehow I don't know if it was evidence from that day in court or if the bailiffs. In a daze, I picked up the pistol. Get away! Get away from my father! Bang. Ah! That's why you don't throw guns. This is in Borderlands. And with that scream, I wake. It's a bone-chilling scream. A scream that has rung in my ears for the past 15 years. But, but that's just a dream, right? Right? That thought is the only thing that has kept me sane for the last 15 years. But what if I'm wrong? What if it's real? They say that sometimes people shut out memories in self-defense. Maybe it was I who killed my father. What? If you think about it that way, this letter makes sense. Get your revenge on Miles Edgeworth. Think about it. Yogi was really innocent. That's why he wanted revenge against me. Wait, Edgeworth, you... you mean... It was me. I was the true criminal of DL6. I shot my father. This is bad. What are we going to do, Nick? What can we do? I don't know. I don't think there's anything we can do, like it or not. If there's someone else who knows a lot about the DL6 incident, maybe... There is, Nick! There is someone else who knows about DL6! We go to Grossberg! You better be here, you fat bastard! But Mr. Grossberg! Ah, oh, hello there! What's wrong? You look troubled! No kidding, I can't believe you're not! My, 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 my. Just calm down and tell me what's happened, hmm? It's Mr. Edgeworth. He, he, he. I see. 
So Edgeworth dreamt he shot his own father. It's only a dream, only a dream. I wonder. What? If that's the case, then why do you two look so troubled? Well... Also, consider this. Yogi quite certainly holds a deep grudge against Miles Edgeworth. So deep he'd want to frame him for murder. This leads me to surmise that Mr. Edgeworth's dream was not a dream. It was real. As you imagine. Excuse me. I know this is getting to me. Miles Edgeworth threw the pistol to save his father. The pistol fired, and the deed was done. No, I don't believe it. Yogi was suspected of murder, and his career as a bailiff was irrevocably wrecked. Thus, he sought revenge on Miles Edgeworth. This was his last chance, of course, with the statute of limitations so close. He could have just shot him like he did to Hammond. In fact, actually, no, this doesn't make sense. Because Hammond was his lawyer. Hammond was Edgeworth's lawyer. Or not Edgeworth, but not Edgeworth. He was Yogi's lawyer. Why would he kill his lawyer? Unless he wanted to frame Edgeworth. But if he wanted to frame Edgeworth, why not just shoot Edgeworth? He had him on a boat. You could have just shot him. So it doesn't make this revenge plan doesn't make much sense. Gregory Edgeworth. What do you know about Edgeworth's father? He was a defense attorney without peer. It sounds trite, but it's true. Well, he may have had one peer now that I think about it. Your mentor, Mia Fay. My sister? Gregory Edgeworth was very disapproving of Mr. Von Karma's techniques. That's no surprise. Von Karma is an extreme man. Forged testimonies and evidence are nothing to him. The result? He has a perfect win record in court. To beat him, Gregory Edgeworth tried to call attention to his methods. And? He lost and died in despair, as it were. I see. The spirit medium. When Gregory Edgeworth was killed, the police called on a spirit medium. That was your mother, Misty Fay. I am Gregory Edgeworth. I have been killed. The one who shot me was the bailiff, Yanni Yogi. Yet Yogi was found innocent. That's when my mother left us. Everyone called her a fraud. That's right. Everyone thought she was, you see. Yet, now that I think about it, it seems the one who lied was Gregory Edgeworth's ghost. Gregory Edgeworth must have known who shot him. I don't believe it. So you're saying he falsified his testimony? That Edgeworth's dad lied to protect his son? It's only a possibility, mind you. But a possibility nonetheless. But it can't be that straightforward, can it? Oh-ho, so this is the letter. It does seem that Yogi was following this letter when he killed Hammond. Why kill Robert Hammond? Hammond was a skilled defense attorney, but he defended clients not for their own sake, but his own. Huh? His own sake? He never trusted his clients, that one. The only thing he trusted was his own ability. But he got his client found innocent, so why should it matter? Ah, the game is going to answer my question that I had. Actually, my dear, it's quite different. He won that innocent verdict for no one but himself. Yogi was a free man, but socially he was ruined. Huh? You'll understand soon enough. Wait! What is it? This letter. I've seen this handwriting somewhere before, a long time ago. Whose handwriting was this? Do you have any idea who wrote this? Karma? Hmm, could it be Manfred von Karma? Von Karma? Why would he have something to do with this? Um, well, I'm not sure. Him? Von Karma. Von Karma. Wait! You're right, my boy! This is von Karma's handwriting, I'm sure of it! I used to see it all the time on court reports. What? But... That means the one who told Mr. Yogi to kill was... Correct. 
Manfred von Karma himself. What does this mean, then? Why would von Karma want to frame Edgeworth? Well, <laughs> I just figured, well, if anybody... Because maybe, well, I guess it could have thought that it was uh, Yogi with his failing memory, but at the same time, who knows? But it just felt right, because the dude forges evidence. Who knows? Maybe he forged... <laughs> maybe the dude forges murders, too. If it truly was Von Karma who wrote this letter, then he should know the truth. He would know that Miles Edgeworth had accidentally killed his own father. He'll say as much tomorrow in court, I should think. He'll press the point until the court finds Miles Edgeworth guilty. Oh, no. But, but how could Mr. Von Karma know about Mr. Edgeworth's past like that? Even Mr. Edgeworth thought it was just a nightmare. Hmm. That I do not know. Yet I do know that Von Karma is both persistent and a perfectionist. He may be seeking to satisfy a grudge against Gregory Edgeworth by hurting his son. What do you mean? It was 15 years ago. Von Karma met Gregory Edgeworth in court and Von Karma did win. But he didn't make it through the trial and scarred. What happened? What actually happened in the trial between Edra's dad and Von Karma? Von Karma got the guilty verdict he wanted. He won the trial. But Gregory Edgeworth accused Von Karma of faulty evidence. And though he lost the trial, Mr. Edgeworth's accusation stood. Your model hasn't changed since you had maybe forged your own murders? Oh, my bad. Thank you for that. I clicked that, and then I thought I pressed the neutral button again. Meh. So, you'd think that if the accusation stood and people are like, oh no, that Von Karma man, he's not all that good because he does that stuff, that he would, like, take some social hit, but obviously he's still doing a super duper mater, remember? Faulty evidence? It was the only penalty Von- Oh! Oh. Von Karma didn't like that he got a single penalty on his record? Dude. So he was so hinged on perfection of getting guilty verdicts, of like going through it and like winning them in single days or whatever, that he was so upset that he got a penalty? Motherfucker, I win by getting penalties. Remember to stay hydrated. <laughs> As you ponder the insanity of an insane perfectionist. A perfectionist whose voice hurts my throat. Gregory Edgeworth dealt a blow to his perfect trial record. Wow. It must have been quite a shock for Von Karma. He took a vacation for several months after that, you see. A vacation? Yes, an unusual event for the man. That was the first and the last vacation he's taken in his many years of prosecuting. Really? He doesn't take vacations? Like, go to the sea or uh, to the mountains? Don't tell me he's never been to Europe! You have strange ideas about vacations, Maya. In any case, that was the only time he took a vacation from work. I believe the penalty upset him quite a lot. Odd. If he wanted to keep a perfect record so badly... Why would he take such a long vacation? <laughs> hmm. There is something about this and I'm sure we'll find out. Von Karma is wrapped up in this bullshit. What do we do, Nick? Von Karma is gonna bring the DL6, bring up DL6, you can bet on it. What if Mr. Edgeworth pleads guilty to DL6? I won't let him! Um, yes, Mr. Wright. I hate to say this, but even accidental murder is murder, you know. I imagine he got so frustrated about getting a penalty that he took a vacation to jerk off to his record. <laughs> yeah, that's something that a narcissist, perfectionist like Von Karma would do. I didn't know that. Well, technically, accidental murder is manslaughter. Unless it gets upgraded because of extreme negligence. But couldn't the idea that the oxygen deprivation... Like... If Yanni Yogi got p caught off innocent because of oxygen deprivation, then shouldn't Edgeworth also get the same treatment? 
Not to mention he was also a child at the time. He was a child whose dad was, in his mind, under a attack by an insane man, while also himself under the effects of oxygen deprivation. It's not murder. It's at best a manslaughter through unhinged self-defense. I... I just believe in Edgeworth's innocence. And besides, this is 2001. Edgeworth would have gone free if he did kill his dad. Ow. I can't believe he'd kill someone. But, but Nick, Mr. Edgeworth admits it himself. His father must have lied to protect him from beyond the grave. I don't care. I know he's not guilty. Mr. Wright, if you say so, I suppose I could go check again. The police files might hold something of interest. Mr. Grossberg, thank you. I can't promise anything. In fact, I think the chances of finding something are slim. I understand. Police materials, hmm? So we gotta go- oh, wrong button! Good god, imagine if I accidentally reloaded and I had to go through all that. I mean, I could probably go through it quickly, but I don't have this- This is a complicated case, man! Can we talk to him? No. We've been interested like, we think that he's evil. So you're telling me that Crossberg never got that painting back? Nope, because while he did get blackmailed, out of his painting, because it was technically like, he ba I think he mostly just went, I don't want to bother with this. Also because he would probably have to admit to the blackmail that happened, which would have put him at odds with the police because he leaked the fact they used a spirit medium to Mr. Wh Red White to get a big payday, which was then used to blackmail him out of his painting. So he's just like, I don't want to deal with the police uh, knowing that I was the one who did that. <laughs> There's hardly anyone here. Everyone must be out looking for the old guy, Yogi. Ah, it's you. I don't think Gumshoe will be b coming back today. He's staying out late looking for someone. Sounds like Detective Gumshoe is pounding the pavement for real. Um, we were wondering if we could check the record room again. Well, now I can't have just anyone wandering around in there. But I guess Mr. Von Karma is in there now anyway. You can go in so long as he's there. Von Karma? Well, that's not good. <laughs> Von Karma's in there pulling some bullshit. He just arrived, actually. Von Karma's in the records room. Nick, let's hurry! We gotta go. That motherfucker's getting my shit. December 27th, police department. Dusty as always. There's an open drawer! We were only here just yesterday. I'm sure they just haven't had time to clean. What's wrong, Nick? Nothing. I'm just noticing that he isn't here. Von Karma. Well, first, let's... Oh, no, can't talk, so... Huh? One of the drawers here is open. Someone must have been looking in it recently. The label says, Unsolved Cases Evidence. Hmm, Unsolved Cases? Nick! The file for DL6 is completely empty! I hope that we still have some of the evidence, because don't we have some DL6 information? Yeah, we do have some of the file, at least. What? What are you doing in here? Ah! Von Karma! He looks so weird actually looking on him straight on like that. You. How did you know my name? Huh? Have we met? What are you saying? We see each other every day, don't we? We're Miles Edgeworth's defense team. Defense team? <laughs> I beg your pardon. You see, I rarely see. You see, I rarely remember defense attorneys. They are like bugs to me. Needless things to be crushed. Karma has blue earrings, so you know he's evil. I never knew that to be a sign of evil, but who knows. I think it's mostly to go along with his whole over-the-top shtick. I can... I can see how this guy was Edgeworth's mentor. Let's talk about Edgeworth. Um, Mr. Edgeworth is your student, right? A romanticist who still can't shed the veneer of amateurism. Just like his father, always second rate. Mr. Von Karma, you had an axe to grind with Mr. Gregory Edgeworth, didn't you? Me? A grudge against a mere defense attorney? Why? Because he dealt a blow to your otherwise perfect trial record? Hmm. So you did. But what I don't get is, why did you take his son under your wing afterwards? The son of your most bitter rival. 
That, my dear attorney, is none of your business. Tomorrow's trial. Tomorrow will be the last day of the trial. It's been a while since I've had a defense attorney last this long. Still, you will lose in the end. Miles Edgeworth will admit his own guilt. His guilt of 15 years ago, you mean? You're quite the researcher. If you've done your homework so well, then certainly you must understand. You know what Miles Edgeworth will tell the courtroom. We were right. So Von Karma is going to bring up the deal six in court tomorrow. I doubt this will change anything, but I'm gonna feel like I have your handwriting. Would you dare? Would you care? Mr. Von Karma, have a look at this. This was you, wasn't it? You instructed Yanni Yogi to commit murder. Yanni Yogi. How many years has it been since I've heard him called by that name? He's a fool. I told him to burn it after he read it. So you admit it! You, you wrote Mr. Yogi this letter! Yes, my dear defense attorney. Thank you for taking the trouble to bring it to me. You've saved me a l from a lot of needless hassle. What? Nick, what is that thing? A fucking taser. A stun gun. For self-defense, usually. Indeed. 600,000 volts will course through your body like a dog touching an electric fence. Big mistake in showing him the letter. Well, at the same time, I guess I could have... But I don't know, usually when this stuff happens, like... Does the game even allow you to do stupid things? Normally, you have to, like, go through and even, like... Then again, I thought the same thing with Mr. Red White, where I went up to him and be like, Hey, do you know this? And that that was to bring him into the thing. Hmm. I meant logically. That's true. Especially because, again... Uh, like... <laughs> At some point in one of the trials, I think it was the second one, somebody actually told Phoenix, hey, you probably shouldn't go around showing, uh, like, somebody your evidence if you don't need to. And I think even in the Steel Samurai case, he said, no, my, uh, m m no, no, Mia, no, my, my brain is just going bleh. We can't go do that. We need to hold it close to our chest. But it is a bit weird. 600,000? Oh, don't worry. People don't die from it, usually. Now give me the letter. No! No! Ah, what are you? Nick, run! We probably should run. Maya! Out of my way! Ah! He's a fast old bastard if that happened. And nobody heard the screaming. Uh, he got us. The letter's gone, of course. And he took the DL6 evidence. All of it. 2.5 million volts is usually the number that kills people. Interesting. Back to having no clues. Wait, Maya jumped first. Maya, is she okay? M Maya! Maya, open your eyes! Maya! The letter. Did he take it? Huh? Oh, yeah. Are you okay? I... I couldn't stop him. I jumped as fast as I could, but one shot from that thing knocked me out cold. I'm useless. I'm no good as a lawyer or a medium. I can't even call my sister. Not even now when we need her the most. I wish I hadn't woken up at all. Oof! Oof! Oh, harsh! Maya! Uh, there has to be some way I can help her. Better do something about her first, her self-confidence first. Maya, she's holding something. Did you know that $10 million is usually what people will uh, take to do anything from murder to stealing? <laughs> like as a prize, you'd think that people would be like, Hey, I'll give you $10,000 to go steal something. They'll be like, oh yeah, sure. But I guess, but I guess when it comes to everyday people, they're like, hey, if you give me $10 million, I'll do basically anything. Because $10 million, that can be very a nice big, 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 big. She's holding something. What is that? A bullet? DL6 incident evidence number seven taken from the heart of Gregory Edgeworth. 
I remember. Von Karma was holding this when Maya jumped him. Take him from Greg. I wonder how that's going to help us. I'll prove it to you, Maya. You're most definitely not useless. I'll prove it to you in court tomorrow. And that's all we get. Oh, boy. Hmm. Of course the item we keep is a bullet. A second one. But it might be just... It might just be the silver bullet we need. Or... There's probably a better term, but brain. Hmm. Ah, screw it. Let's go on and finish this case. I know that there's a fifth one, but eh, let's go on. Do 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 do. Full trim ahead. Full trim ahead. Full steam, full stream. Ah, both work. This is it. Judgment day. Hey, things are going to be get settled at last. A lot of things. Ah! What's the big idea? Sorry, Nick. I only touched your shoulder. I guess the shock hasn't worn off, <laughs> off from my run-in with the stun gun yesterday. Anyhow, today's the last day of the trial. Good luck, Nick. Yeah. Thanks, Maya. Edgeworth is looking glum as always. Hope Von Karma doesn't push him too hard. Fun fact, in the anime, the fifth case was, it, uh, was the class trial. Really? That's fun. Whoa! Whoa what are you doing? Sorry, I'm sorry. I just thought I'd cheer you up with a pat on the back. Maya, maybe you should go outside and discharge. Right, good idea. Try not to electrocute anyone on your way out. Whoa, pal! Hey, gumshoe! <laughs> I hear, I see someone say pal, it's like, ah, gumshoe. What's gotten into that girl? Detective Gumshoe. Morning, Mr. Edgeworth. Uh, good morning. How did it go? Oh, how did it go, Detective? Have no fear. As promised, I've captured our runaway caretaker. I just brought him in. Took all night, pal. Thanks, Detective Gumshoe. Must be tired. <laughs> Actually, after that shock I got on the way in, I feel pretty good. Yogi says he's forgotten his own name. But that has to be a lie. Why would he want revenge on Edgeworth if he couldn't remember his past? He does remember. And I'm going to prove it. Ooh! Here we go! Let's -a go! Court is now in session for the trial of Miles Edgeworth. The defense is ready, Your Honor. The prosecution is ready. Electrocute is a mix between electricity and execute, so you're electrocuted anyone if they don't. <laughs> you. Uh, ah, so you haven't electrocuted anyone if they haven't. if they don't die. Meh. Interesting. Uh, right, very well. We have reached the final day of our proceedings in this trial. I ask that the prosecution submit decisive evidence. Understood. Come on, don't be awed into silence by every little thing he says. Very well, Mr. Von Karma, your opening statement. Right. Thanks to Detective Gumshoe's efforts, the boat rental shop caretaker has been arrested. The correct term is you shocked them. Yeah. In yesterday's trial, the defense asserted that the caretaker was the murderer. However, the caretaker has yet to confirm this. I would like to ask the defense to cross-examine him as much as necessary. Very well. Please bring the witness into the courtroom. Ladies and gentlemen of the court, I believe you all remember our witness. He lives in the boat rental shop on the lake from where he witnessed the incident. In addition, he has currently lost memory of his name and identity. Witness, why did you run away yesterday? The witness was not running away, as he will now testify. I see. Very well, please begin your testimony. Hmm, eh? Why I left court. Uh, I'm really sorry about just leaving yesterday like I did, but I wasn't running away or nothing. I went to buy some food for Polly, see? I figured I'd got nothing to do with this incident anyhow. I uh, mean, I'd need one of those motive things, right? And I don't got one. So my testimony yesterday stands as... 
Very well. Let's begin the cross-examination, shall we? He has to know his name. Yanni Yogi. You're Yanni Yogi and I'm going to prove it. Let's press on the Polly one, see if we can get any information. Food? Well, Polly's a bit of a gourmand, you see. She only eats these high-quality bird pellets from France. They only have them in the big pet shop downtown. But you weren't arrested until this morning. Why didn't you go back to the caretaker shack? Uh, well, I kind of got lost, you see. The witness has trouble remembering things sometimes. When the police apprehended him, he was on his way back to the shack. Yeah, right. Nice try, Von Karma. No one's gonna believe that. Hmm, I see. So he was lost. Please, Your Honor, come to your senses. Well, let's press on the motive. How can you say you had no motive? I say you do. You had a grudge against Edgeworth and the victim, Robert Hammond. That's why you took revenge on them, right? Please don't make me repeat myself, right? This witness has no memory of anything beyond several years ago. He can't hold a grudge, it's impossible. I have to prove he's lying about his memory. Otherwise, it's gonna be the same thing over and over until the trial ends. First things first, I have to prove this man is who he is. Do that and the motive will prove itself. Well, what evidence do we have? Case file, maybe. First things first, now that we're into the thick of it. Let's actually a diddle dee. Uh, the first thing that comes to mind is that I should present the case file. Because it has to be a DL6 thing. I don't think any of these matter. Because the autopsy report, I don't think matter. This doesn't matter right now, I think. This doesn't matter in the context here. I need one of those motive things, right? So, DL6. Nope. Game don't like that. Your Honor, that statement contradicts this evidence. It does? I figured that would be it. Or is it anything else here? Nah, eh, well, I guess press everything. Why not? I call what you did running away and not just leaving. You heard Larry's testimony and realized you were in danger. But then, yet yeah, he'll just keep coming in. Now, Mr. Wright, there's no need to rush to conclusions. As I said, the witness was not running away. Listen to the testimony. In fact, they both do. Von Karma and Yanni Yogi. We already did bought all these some food. So I guess we have to. Hmm. Well, let's keep pressing, I guess. Then why did you leave? He's just about to say why. Is it so hard for you to just quietly listen when someone is talking? If I sat quietly, Edgeworth would be guilty in three minutes. The parrot is evidence. I'm done. <laughs> Maybe. Possibly. Hmm, maybe, maybe. You've lost much of your memory, is that correct? Er, uh, yep, seems like it. Then how could you know that you didn't have anything to do with this incident? Uh, or, or maybe you're lying about not having your memory, hmm? You know exactly who you are. The witness has testified quite clearly that he has no memory of who he is. If you claim that he's lying, then show the court proof. How am I supposed to prove what's going on in that old codger's head? That's impossible. Hmm, I'm glad you've come to your senses. Might I say something, Mr. Wright? Yes, yes, Your Honor? You've been saying the same thing now over and over. You've been calling the witness's memory of past or lack thereof into question. But does this really have anything to do with the current case? Of course, Your Honor. The witness has said he has nothing to do with this case and no motive. But both of these statements are lies! I also, I guess the one thing that I do kind of a, find a little annoying is when the game does this, oh, we're gonna present a testimony, but we don't want you to actually uh, present any evidence. Granted, I, that's probably on me for not 
pressing on everything, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so it's probably on me more than anything. Order, order, Mr. Wright. There is a serious problem with your claim. Or are you saying? Are you saying you know who this witness is? Of course, Your Honor. Ho, ho. Now this is interesting. I would like to know myself. So who is he? Don't play dumb, Von Karma. Mr. Wright, please tell us the witness's name. Yanni Yogi. His name is Yanni Yogi, a former court bailiff. And actually, jumping back to chat, the parrot is evidence? He, he literally is. He is in the court record. Well, she is. So he, they are evidence. It says right there in the corner. <laughs> His name is Yanni Yogi, a former court bailiff. Yogi? That name seems familiar. Oh! Yanni Yogi from the Deal 6 incident. It figures the judge would have heard of it. It was such a famous case. But what does this mean? Your Honor, if this man is Mr. Yogi, then he has a clear motive. His name is Edgeworth. I do love the kind of obviously wrong answers sometimes. Tisk, tisk, tisk. Jumping to conclusions again, Mr. Wright. This man, this witness, is Yanni Yogi. Fascinating. However, how do you propose to prove this to the court? This is a court of law, as you may recall. You need proof. And allow me to repeat once more that the witness has lost his memory. This is it. I have to do this now. If I can't prove he's Yogi right here, right now, then I've got Nick. How are you going to prove it? How can you prove that he's Yanni Yogi? It's okay. It's actually quite simple. Your Honor, please take this man's fingerprints. Then we'll compare them to the fingerprints on file. I see. That makes sense. Tisk, tisk, tisk. Huh? I'm so very sorry, Mr. Wright. W why? Since these games have spirit mediums, I'm surprised they didn't do a case where someone body swaps. Huh. That would be an interesting thing. That also reminds me that if I remember from various little things, I know that Phoenix in the future gets like kind of a lie detector minigame thing where you can uh, pick people's like mental locks or something. I can't wait for that to come in the later games. The witness has no fingerprints. What? What? No fingerprints? Uh, you see, before I worked as a caretaker, I worked at a chemical plant. I burned my fingerprints working with the stuff. Yep. Cyclops. Yeah, those. What? Yogi, you sneak. You burned your fingerprints off to hide your past. Well, if the witness has no fingerprints, I guess we will not be able to prove his identity. No. Tisk, tisk, tisk. Well, what will you do, Mr. Wright? Uh... Hmm. It seems that the case has been decided, no? No. I know what happened. I know everything. I... I just can't prove it. No, I can't let it in like this. I can't lose. There has to be another way. There is no one who can testify. Yet no one who can testify as to who this witness is. No one! Nick, what are we going to do? <laughs> Click your songs when he says tisk. But it's hard. And plus it also comes out so... normal. It has to be deep and intimidating. I can't do a deep tisk. I didn't even consider that. He might have erased his fingerprints. What do I do? Well, Mr. Wright, perhaps you'd like to cross-examine his parrot for a little comic relief. Yeah, yeah, very funny. You're the sore winner, Von Karma. Wait a second. Cross-examine his parrot? What is this, Nick? No, you're not going to. Your Honor! <laughs> the defense would like to take Mr. Von Karma up on his proposal! <laughs> take up Mr. Von Karma up? On my proposal? Exactly, Your Honor. I would like to cross-examine the witness's pet parrot. He did offer. <laughs> he literally did. Uh, order! Order! Uh, well, what do you think, Mr. Von Karma? We cross-examine a parrot, okay? <laughs> You need to even ask? This is a farce. I object. You offered. Wait a second. You were the one who suggested I cross-examine the parent Von Karma. I have a right to do as you suggested. Hmm. Well, if you're so desperate, then please be my guest. 
Of course, should you go through with this, and nothing comes of it, then I hope you're ready for the consequences. Nick, this is crazy! Well, still want to go through with your little game? I'm doing it. Let the parrot take the stand. I will cross-examine her, Your Honor. This is the most ridiculous thing I have ever heard. Well, Karma's rigged every person's testimony, every piece of evidence. The parrot is the only evidence. She is also a witness. Ah, not only the evidence, but also a witness. She is! At least, I think so. This is my last chance. Bailiff, bring in the parrot! I love this game. I love it. That's quite a bird. Please tell us your name. Name! The witness is ignoring me. It must hurt to be ignored by a bird. <clears throat> Very well, witness. Who is your owner? Please uh, testify for us. In Dual Destinies, you defend an orca. <laughs> of course. Hello! Hello! <laughs> Hmm, certainly the most concise testimony we've had so far. Very well, begin your cross-examination. Right. What are you going to do, Nick? I, I don't know. What do we do, Maya? Um... I, do we present evidence? Hello, hello! We could maybe present evidence. If only we had, like, a voice recording or something. That's it? That's the testimony? Witness, you can't just say hello and expect us to get anywhere. I want you to testify. Maya, you talk to her. Right, uh, what do I say? Have we forgotten something? As I recall two days ago. Polly, Polly, have we forgotten something? <laughs> Don't forget the L6. <laughs> if I can get Polly to say that here. That will prove that the caretaker had something to do with DL6. Um, Polly, have we forgotten something? Hello! They lie! How did Polly? That's not what you're supposed to say. Forgot. Something we forgot. Hello! Hello! Uh-oh, it's not working, Nick. She won't say it. This is ridiculous. Why won't she say it? Tisk, tisk, tisk. Something the matter, Mr. Wright. Wait. Don't tell me Von Karma expected this. He couldn't have ret retrained the parent. Could he? Did he train her not to respond when we asked if we'd forgotten something? Well, I guess we should try to get some information out of her. We need to show the judge that her owner is Mr. Yogi. Hello, hello! Hmm. Remember to stay hydrated while cross-examining a parrot. Polly, Polly, what's your name? Polly, Polly, Mr. Wright. I think we've established that the parent's name is Polly. Does this have anything to do with her, of her owner's identity? Of course it does. Yes, it does. Ha! Fascinating. You claim that the parent's name will prove her owner's identity. Then show us the proof. Nick, don't think you're taking the bluffing a little too far. Listen, we're not here to answer the question of who is the caretaker. We're here to prove that he is Yanni Yogi. All we have to do is tie the name Polly to Yogi. Your Honor, the proof of the character. How do we, though? Oxygen, Calcusa, Maxine. Gregory, Edro, Trap, Elevator, da da da. Ah, oh, 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 oh! Court bailiff trapped in the elevator with the Edgeworths, memory loss due to oxygen deprivation after his arrest, fiance Polly Jenkins committed suicide. Hello! A DL6 case file? That's quite a large file you have there. Which page is the proof on, then? Show us or stop wasting our time. Hmm, very well. Mr. Wright, please show us the page. Where in this file is the information? Suspect data. It's on the suspect data page. This page has all the information about Yanni Yogi. Right after he was arrested, his fiancée committed suicide, see? Hmm, indeed. It does say that. I'm doing the Von Karma voice for this. It does say that, yes. What was his fiancé's name? Polly Jenkins. Polly. Exactly, Your Honor. He wanted to remember the name of his fiancé who had committed suicide. That's why he named his parrot after her. I see. I guess that is possible. Bah, mere coincidence, that's all. My granddaughter has a dog she calls Phoenix. Well, Mr. Phoenix Wright, does this make you my granddaughter's fiancé? 
She's only seven years old! Mm, indeed. Alone, it is a little weak for evidence in a murder trial. We would need some other corroborating evidence. Where am I going to find that? Nick, we're getting closer. One more, if we can just get one more piece of evidence. Right, but what? Hmm. Very well, witness, you may continue. I want to... Oh, dang it. Hello, hello. What if we press on that? Witness, you're here to speak. You must speak to me. Frankly, I can't believe that you're speaking to the parent. Well, I guess we should try to get some information out of her. Hmm. I doubt we can present anything to you. Unless we present Polly to Polly, but I guess we could also uh, go down the last thing. What's the uh, safe number? What's the safe number? Maybe I'll get her to say the number of the safe. Yeah, that's what I was going to say, <laughs> chat. <laughs> try the safe number. Huh? The safe? Why? Let's just try to get her to say anything, okay? Polly, what was the number to the safe in the shack? What, what? One, two, two, eight. One, two, two, eight. My, what a reckless parrot. Well, Mr. Wright, you aren't claiming that this number has something to do with the caretaker. Does it? Let's go back to the DL6 file. One, two, two, eight. The date of the dealy dee. It does! Actually, it does. That's why I had her say it. Ha! Ridiculous. How can the number to a safe tell us who the caretaker is? Show us your proof. What could possibly link this number to the caretaker's true identity? DL6 case file. The DL6 case file? What is this obsession you have with that case? Mr. Wright, where in the file is something relating to the number? Case summary. It's on the case summary page. The case summary? Specifically, the date on which the DL6 incident occurred. The date of the incident, December 28th. Why, that's today's date, 15 years ago. And the number on the safe is 1228. Ah! He used the date of the DL6 incident as the number for his safe, Your Honor. That's how important that date was to him. I see. It certainly is an interesting coincidence. People often set their secret num often set their secret numbers to dates. Bah, this is not tangible proof. I set my ATM card number to 0001 because I'm number one. <laughs> this has nothing to do with a date. Nothing! That's enough. I think we've reached a conclusion here. This is a mere coincidence, that's all. True, that is a possibility. However, two coincidences at the same time seems more like a pattern to me. What are you saying? Summon the caretaker of the boat shop immediately! Witness, tell us your name. Wait! This witness, he doesn't remember. No, it's okay. Oh, he's just completely changed. I've accomplished what I wanted to. I'm done. Nick, he looks totally different. This is the real Yogi, I think. Finally. He's been acting feeble to hide his true identity. Acting for 15 years. Well, let me ask you again. Please state your name for the court. And then it turns out to be someone completely different. My name is Yanni Yogi. Fifteen years ago, I served as a bailiff in this very court. <laughs> I like that they even changed his back sprite for that. Order! Order! Yanni Yogi! Wow, he's not arching his back. Totally different. It does change his posture. So was it you who killed Robert Hammond and tried to frame Miles Edgeworth for his death? Yes, it was me. I did it. They put me on the witness stand 15 years ago. Robert Hammond, he said I was mentally unsound. He told me it would make me innocent, get me off the hook. So, I pretended to have brain damage. I was innocent, really, but he didn't believe me. We won the trial, but I lost everything. I lost my job, my fiance, my social status. Then, this year, 15 years later, a package arrived. It was a letter and a pistol. 
The plan was written out in careful detail. It was a plan for me to take my revenge on the people who ruined my life. I didn't care who had sent it. I thought this was my chance after 15 years. This was it. Finally, a chance to have my revenge on Robert Hammond and Miles Edgeworth. I have no regrets. Wait a moment. Revenge? Against Miles Edgeworth? What do you mean? I'm not at liberty to speak on that matter. Why don't you ask Mr. Edgeworth yourself? So what made him confess? Mostly, I think it was at the end... He, and I missed the last bit there because I was talking to myself. But I think at the end, he was just like... Like, ah, eh, we've come so far. He just keeps digging, and at this point... He felt content. So it was probably just a sense of the intensity of the situation along with, well, what do I really have to go back to? <laughs> a parrot? A boat rental shop? No life? And also, maybe he sensed a bit that... Who knows, maybe he admired the defense of Phoenix Wright. And he's like, well, that kid's going far. He's not saying that his person, his defendant is mentally damaged. Maybe he actually cares. Who knows? Von Karma, where is Mr. Yogi? I'm under arrest, Your Honor. I saw no room for error in his confession. Then, the defendant Miles Edgeworth is innocent. In this case, at least. Hmm. Very well. Will the defendant please take the stand? There are a few mysteries left unsolved. Still, you are cleared of suspicion for this particular case, so I'd like to pass judgment on the murder of Mr. Robert Hammond. Any objections? I don't believe it. Why isn't Von Karma saying anything? Very well. Then this court finds the defendant, Mr. Miles Edgeworth, not guilty. Confetti time! Confetti for all. This is all. The court is adjourned. Objection! <laughs> oh, come on, Edgeworth. D d someone just say objection. It wasn't Von Karma. Wait, but that means... No. Edgeworth! Your Honor, I object to your judgment. What do you mean? I'm not innocent at all. As we have heard, Yami Yogi killed Robert Hammond in revenge. But revenge for what? Nick, Edgeworth is trying to confess. He's going to be saying he's guilty. He's going to tell them he was the murderer in the DL6 incident. He's going to tell them he killed his own dad. Oh, what do I do? The sensible thing would be to raise an objection, but I feel it'd be shot down. We have to leave it to Edgeworth for now. No, I'm sure Edgeworth thought about this one long and hard. This isn't my place to interfere. Nick, are you sure? There's nothing we can do about it. This is his problem now. For 15 years, I've had a recurring dream. A nightmare. It's only a nightmare, that's what I told myself. But now I know it wasn't a dream. Yanni Yogi wasn't the killer. You mean, in the incident where your father died? From the distance of the shot, it wasn't suicide either. Everything was as clear as day. The murderer, the criminal in the DL6 incident, it was me. Your Honor, I confess my guilt. I am guilty for DL6, the statute of limitations which ends today. The culprit is me. Order, order, this is certainly unexpected. In the anime, since Larry stole the money, Phoenix said, and I quote, I'll sue you, Larry. <laughs> the defendant declared innocent is to confessing to a different crime. A crime of which the statute of limitations runs out today. I'm not really sure how I should deal with this. Bah, it's obvious. We hold a trial right here, right now. We try this man for his crime of 15 years ago. I think, I think I would like to take a five minute recess. During this time, I will consider the appropriate course of action to take. Court is adjourned. Just five minutes? Just five minutes. Well, I'm sorry, right? I've just wasted all of your effort. Mr. Edgeworth, I just don't believe it, sir. I mean, you kill your dad? 
I didn't want to believe it myself, Detective, but it's the truth. I deserve to be punished. Murder is murder, no matter what the circumstances. This is crazy! Just crazy! Nick, what are you doing? Uh, oh. I was just reading through the court record once more. I'm getting my case ready. Your case? For what? Huh? Isn't it obvious? I'm gonna prove that Miles Edgeworth is innocent. What are you talking about, pal? He just admitted to it! He confessed that he did it. In court. I'm sorry, Edgeworth. I don't believe your nightmare. What? It's just a dream. It's not real. The truth is right here in this court record. In any case, tighten your belts. The real fight is just beginning. I'll prove you're innocent. Trust me. Right. Maybe we will. Maybe we will. They can't hold a trial after they just had one. Welcome to the wacky universe of Phoenix Wright where they're like, We have too much crime. We have too much crime. You know what we, we need to do to, 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 to fix that? Well, we're going to make it so that courts can only last three days. And the, the, the verdict has to be made. Wacky world. Now then, I would like to resume our trial. Judge, Miles Edgeworth has admitted his own guilt. He has confessed his crime. Let us begin by hearing his testimony. Then, though pointless, let the defense do their cross-examination. The statute of limitations on the DL6 incident runs out today. Though it's unconventional for me, I'd like to run this one by the book. My see, does the defense have any objections? No, Your Honor. But Karma, you knew this was going to happen from the very beginning, didn't you? Very well. Will Mr. Miles Edgeworth take the stand? Will the witness state his name and profession? Miles Edgeworth. I am a prosecuting attorney. Mr. Edgeworth, 15 years ago you mistakenly killed your father, Gregory Edgeworth. Is this correct? It is correct. Then testify about this matter to the court. When Edgeworth is telling me about his dream yesterday, I noticed something. One detail didn't quite fit. That'll be the key, but only if I can get it to work. Actually, come to think of it, I think I might have uh, have that as well. My thought is, if they were going down of uh, like oxygen deprivation, how could he scream? Please, please. The DL6 incident. That day, I had gone to the courtroom to observe one of my father's trials. As we went to leave, an earthquake struck, tra trapping us in the elevator. My father and Mr. Yogi lost their composure and began to argue. Just then, something heavy fell at my feet. I picked it up and threw it at Mr. Yogi. I wanted them to stop fighting. A moment later, there was a single gunshot and a scream. It was a terrible scream. I remember it to this day. That's all. Well, time to press everything. And until now, you thought this memory was a dream. We were stuck in that elevator for five hours. The oxygen in the elevator ran out, and I lost my memory of the events. Bah! The same claim Mr. Yogi has made. Granted, uh, that was because he was lying about murder. This is literally a child who is suffering oxygen deprivation. Very well, Mr. Wright. Your cross-examination, please. Yes, Your Honor. Well, time to press everything. Well, actually, first save, then press everything. What was the trial your father was involved in on that day? I don't remember things very clearly. Only two things. I know my father lost, and Mr. Von Karma was the prosecuting attorney. Mr. Von Karma, you were handling that case? It was 15 years ago. I don't remember the details. That was when Edgeworth pointed out the problem in Von Karma's evidence. As we went to leave, an earthquake struck, trapping us in the elevator. So there were three people, including yourself, trapped in the elevator. Yes, myself, my father, and Yanni Yogi. We were fine at first, but then as time passed and no one came to help, my father and Mr. Yogi lost their composure and began to argue. What did you do then? I was a nine-year-old boy at the time. What could I do? I was scared, trembling in the corner. But then... Just then, something heavy fell at my feet. 
What was it? A pistol. I assume it was the favorite, Yanni Yogi's. The safety must have come off when it fell from his holster. And you picked it up. What happened next? I picked it up and threw it at Mr. Yogi. I wanted them to stop fighting. Did you know it was a pistol when you threw it? I think I knew. I knew it was dangerous, but the air was getting so thick I panicked. So you're saying that you threw the pistol at Mr. Yogi? I was, in a daze. A moment later, there was a single gunshot, and then a scream. The gun fired once? Yes. I think, after I threw it, I lost consciousness. Since then, they've echoed in my head every day. The gunshot, and that horrible scream. The scream. It was a terrible scream. I remember it to this day. To this day? Yes. I can practically hear it now. I doubt it will ever forget that scream as long as I live. There it is. One part of that testimony clearly contradicts the evidence. I don't know what it means. I'd better find out and make it quick. Hmm. Let's see. Case file. Air and elevator was depleted at time of incident. No clues found at scene. Defense attorney trapped in elevator returning from lost... Trial, Miles Edgeworth, age 9, one bullet from a heart, the murder weapon was fired twice! A single gunshot! I'm gonna present the DL6 case evidence and say, on page 2? On page 2. Objection. Objection! Are you sure you only heard one gunshot? Yes, I'm sure of that. I heard the shot and the scream. And everything faded. I was unconscious until the rescuers came. I see. No, Your Honor, unfortunately you don't. Look at this file one more time. This plainly contradicts the witness's testimony. You do enjoy dragging out that file, don't you? I don't accept this evidence unless you can tell us what page it's on. Which page contradicts Miles Edgeworth's testimony? Look at the victim data in this file. It says it quite plainly. The murder weapon was fired twice. Miles Edgeworth only heard one gunshot, yet the murder weapon was fired twice. The first shot was the accidental firing when the pistol was thrown. So who fired the remaining shot? Hmm, was there perhaps another shooter who fired the second shot? Your Honor, as I'm sure you're aware, this incident occurred 15 years ago. The evidence is dated. The pistol did fire twice. However, we do not know when that second shot was fired. It might have been fired the day before the incident. There is no proof that the second shot had anything to do with this incident. What? Mm, I see, I see. You do have a point, Mr. Wright. The murder weapon was fired twice, as we have heard. One of those shots was fired by the defendant boy at the time. Do you have any proof that the other shot fired at something did with the case? Yeah. Has something to do with the case. Hmm. The thing to say would be... The thing to say would be... ba ba ba. Because we only have three pieces of evidence. The DL6 case file, the photographic evidence. There it is! The second shot. How could it have been fired through the glass of the elevator and kill him? We do have evidence! Your Honor, I think I will be able to show you proof. What? Impossible! Now, now, Mr. Von Karma, save your surprise for after you've seen the evidence. Very well, Mr. Wright, show us your proof. Do you have evidence that the second firing of the pistol is related to the incident? We do. With picture. Look at this photograph. Look at this photograph. This is a photograph of the scene of the crime 15 years ago. I can see the victim. I can see the victim lying there is Gregory Edgeworth. This proves the murder weapon was fired twice at the time of the incident. This photo proves it. 
So let me get this straight. This photo proves two shots were fired. How? Your Honor, please, please get a clue. Show the judge the contradiction. Bullet hole. Ba -ba -ba -ba. As should be obvious, the contradiction is here. I see. A bullet hole in the door. Your Honor, Gregory Edgeworth was killed by a shot from the pistol. Yet there is also a bullet hole in the elevator door. We also know that the murder weapon was fired twice. Thus, someone else other than Edgeworth fired that second shot. Order! Order! Mr. Wright, what are you driving at? It's simple, Your Honor. At the time of the incident, two shots were fired. One went into Gregory Edgeworth's heart. The other hit the elevator door. Remember that the defendant lost consciousness after the, sh uh, the shot he fired rang out. In conclusion, we must agree that the second shot was fired by someone else. But Mr. Wright, but who else could... But who could that someone else be? The murderer, of course. I knew I should have stepped in before your wild fantasies got out of hand. Mr. Wright, look once more at the DL6 incident case file. Look closely. Try the case summary page. The case summary page? That's page one. Look what is written there. Not a single clue was found on the scene. If the pistol had indeed been fired two times, then the other bullet would have been discovered on the scene. He does have a point. That second bullet has never been found. Why? Because the second bullet does not exist. The bullet that claimed Gregory Edgeworth's life was the one fired by his own son. That is the truth of the matter. The whole truth. It was undoubtedly something else that made that bullet hole in the door. What do you mean, my dude? How can it be something else? Order! I will have order! Mr. Wright has proven one thing to us clearly. That the murder weapon was fired twice at the time of the incident. However, as Mr. Von Karma says, the second bullet fired was not found. It is highly unlikely that the police merely overlooked the second bullet. So all we have is this single bullet fired. I'm afraid I have to discount the cl defense's claim. Tisk, tisk, tisk. I praise the judge for his wisdom in this matter. Gah, how did this happen? I don't believe that the second... I don't believe that the second bullet didn't exist. Was I wrong? Have I been wrong about this whole incident? What are you doing, Nick? Why are you raising an objection? I'm sorry, Maya. What? I, it looks like I was wrong. Nick, if the second bullet wasn't there, then I'll... But there's a bullet hole! There's a bullet hole! How can a bullet hole be happening if there's not a bullet? Yeah. No. But you said you'd do it, Nick. You said you'd get Edgeworth declared innocent. I'm sorry. It's just when I saw the photograph, I thought the two shots had been fired. I was certain of it. I thought I'd won. I thought there was another person, someone else who fired the killing shot. But now, I was wrong to think it could be that simple. This case has stood unsolved for 15 years. Nick? Well, it seems that we have finally cleared up this incident. Only one bullet was found at the crime scene. The shot that was fired by Miles Edgeworth. Precisely. I would like to ask one thing of Miles Edgeworth before passing my verdict. Have you been paying attention to the trial so far? Yes, Your Honor. Do you have any objections? No. No, I do not. So you killed your father, though that was not your intention? Yes, I did. No, he's accepted the guilt. Very well. The statute of limitations on the murder of Gregory Edgeworth runs out today. Therefore, I must pronounce a verdict on the defendant today right here. Right now. Indeed. Does anyone have any objections? I've been here before. It's just like my first day in court. There's so many things I know I should be saying. My mind's gone blank. I can't find the words. Mr. Wright? The obvious answer is to raise an objection. I have an objection. objection. Your Honor, I I object. Tisk tisk tisk. Mr. Wright, what are, on what grounds do you object? Hmm. Uh, Nick, I don't know. His case is perfect. There's a bullet hole. It must exist. Mia, the second bullet. But what? What did you just say? But nothing. The second bullet must exist, but where? Someone took it. It seems waiting is not gain going to produce us any answers from Mr. Wright. Wait, Your Honor. 
Hmm? I, uh... The second bullet, it, it existed! What? But we've just heard proof that it did not exist. There's a bullet hole! I realize that, Your Honor. I'm really grasping here. I... It's just... Someone took it from the scene of the crime. That's what happened. But who? The, the, the murderer! The murderer? Then tell us just who this murderer... Who is this murderer? I'm still thinking about that one. So the criminal took the second bullet, but why? Huh? First of all, who would have... How would they have found it? It's not easy to find a stray bullet, Mr. Wright. Was there some pressing need for the murderer to search for that bullet? The murderer didn't need it. Why would the murderer have spent the time looking for the stray bullet? I haven't got a clue. What's wrong, Mr. Wright? Uh, um... Bah, the murderer had no reason to take the bullet. You don't want to admit it, but it's true. Uh, had to take. Had to take the murderer? What does that mean? You're thinking too normal. Think crazy. Don't think why the bullet was taken. Think why the bullet had to be taken. Mr. Wright? Yes, Your Honor. I have no idea what I'm doing. Uh, well, the murderer had no intention of taking the bullet from the scene. But, uh, the murderer had to take that bullet. Had to, Mr. Wright? What do you mean? Well, for instance... For instance what? Maybe the bullet, uh, hit the murderer? The bullet hit the murderer? Just saying, for instance. I mean, if it hit you, you would have to take it with you, wouldn't you? It's just like... It's not like you could perform surgery right there, you know? I, wait a second. I was just talking off the top of my head, but what if that's really what happened? Let me get this straight. So at the time of the murder, the murderer themselves was shot, and they left with the second bullet still inside them, thus leaving only one bullet at the scene of the crime? Uh, yes. I guess that's how it would work, yes. But there's a problem with that. The other two people rescued from the elevator. Miles Edgeworth and Yanni Yogi were both unharmed. So what that would mean... The murderer came from outside, yes. Just <laughs> grasping at straws here. The two men fight inside the elevator. Trying to stop them, the boy picks up the pistol at his feet and throws it. The pistol discharges in the bullet. <laughs> that looks like a cool design, just as a kind of, like, obviously obscured who they are thing. The bullet goes through the elevator door and hits the murderer outside. The boy loses consciousness. Then the murderer opens the elevator and sees the men inside. Hmm, Mr. Wright, you are truly the most unpredictable defense attorney I've ever known. I can tell you're grasping it, I cannot deny the possibility of what you say. What are you saying? Deny it! Deny it! No one involved at the incident was wounded! There was no murderer! No one was wounded at the time of the incident. He's right, I can't think of anyone. Hey, Nick. Huh? I just thought of something really crazy. Crazy? Remember what Mr. Grossberg said yesterday? Gregory Edgeworth dealt a blow to his perfect trial record. Wow! It must have been quite a shock for Von Karma. He took a vacation for several months after that, you see. Yes, an unusual event for the man. That was the first and the last vacation he's taken in his many years of prosecuting. What if Von Karma didn't take the vacation because of shock, but took it because he was injured? Which would mean... It could only mean one thing. He was the murderer in the DL6 incident. It was the man who shot Gregory Edgeworth. It was Von Karma! Oh man, something wrong, Mr. Wright. You seem dazed. Uh, no, Your Honor. Well, you have indicated the possibility the murderer came from outside. Can you give us the name of your suspect? Uh-oh, should I come out and say it? Say it now. Your Honor, there is a suspect. One lone suspect. Well, this is certainly interesting news. Very well, Mr. Wright. Who is your suspect? F -f 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 ah, my hands are shaking. F what? Von Karma! Von Karma? <laughs> I love that they're playing the music, but no one says anything. You mean THE Von Karma, the prosecutor? The one standing right over there? Bah. You don't object? Hmm. I see no need. Why honor this ridiculous outburst of my objection? Because you took a vacation for several months starting the day after the incident. Yet you pride yourself on a perfect record. Why would you take such a long vacation without any reason? It's 
So you're claiming that I took a vacation to heal my injury from the incident? Fascinating. Prove it. I would have needed surgery, no? Where did I go under the knife, Mr. White? Being the doctor that operated on me. Have him testify. Uh, Nick, let's find out who his doctor is. It's no use. Edgeworth? I know Von Karma, perhaps too well. He's perfect. He wouldn't leave clues. He probably didn't undergo surgery. That would leave a doctor as a witness. <sighs> Nobody's that perfect. So what, Nick? Did Von Karma pull the bullet out by himself? No. I think he let it heal. That's insane. No, he couldn't have. You can't just pull bullets out of yourself? Wait. What does that mean? That bullet has to be somewhere, but where? Tisk, tisk, tisk. Well, Mr. Wright, can you produce evidence to prove that I was shot? Sure. All right, Von Karma, I'll prove it. And I'll even use evidence, and I know you like so much. What? The evidence that proves Von Karma was shot is... We still have a metal detector. This, uh, if this was... Metal detector. Von Karma is perfect. He wouldn't risk surgery, leaving any evidence at all. Because, like, my thought process is, why the hell do we still have this? Why do we still have this? We would not need this. We discarded other evidence, but we didn't discard this? So Karma really got so pissed that he lost a perfect record that he killed a person. I think it was more a crime of opportunity. Because everyone was passed out in there, and a bullet had already been shot and he shot him, that probably also gave him rage. Where he was like, not only was my perfect record kind of broken, but I also got shot. You know what? Fuck this. And shot him when he... So it was a crime of opportunity as well as passion. Von Karma is perfect. He wouldn't risk surgery leaving an evidence trail. So then I ask, where is that bullet now? I think it unlikely that Von Karma performed surgery on himself. You... you don't mean... I do. There's the possibility that the bullet is still inside Von Karma. Is that even possible for all these years? Well, there's one way to find out. We could use this metal detector. Well, Von Karma, I'm gonna run this over you and see what we find. He's actually scared. I refuse. You refuse? But refusing this means you acknowledge that the bullet is still inside you? Order, order, order! Your Honor, the defense requests that we be allowed to use the metal detector. Judge, I call for a suspension of this trial. This is an invasion of privacy. The statute of limitations runs out on this case today. It was you who said we had to end it right here, right now. Mm -hmm. Enough. I permit the use of the metal detector. Von Karma, you will submit yourself to testing. Nick, what does this mean? I don't know, but we have to give it a shot. Beep. <laughs> it reacted. Something's inside his right shoulder. The bullet. Mr. Von Karma? You. It was you. I was afraid this would happen. And so I remain silent. Indeed, there is a bullet in my shoulder. However, it has nothing to do with this incident. What? Mr. Karma, please pull down your pants. This is the TSA. I was shot in the shoulder long before the DL6 incident. I claim that the bullet in my shoulder has no relation to DL6. Well, how about this, Mr. Von Karma? How about we go, we put you under the knife, we take out the bullet, and we compare. But, but Mr. Von Karma, can you prove that? Proof? I have no obligation to prove anything. It is Mr. Wright who must prove something here, not I. Mr. Wright, well, can you prove it? Can you prove that the bullet in Von Karma's shoulder was from DL6? Of course he can't. You can't have any evidence. You don't have any evidence of the- But we do have the bullet! Yes, that's it! That's because you took it out of the records room yesterday. With no proof, you cannot convict me of any crime. So sorry, Mr. Wright. No, I'm the one who's sorry, Mr. Von Karma. What? You were close. One day away from freedom. But you see, I have proof! What? Who would have thought you would dig your own grave trying to convict Edgeworth? 
I can link that bullet to your shoulder in the DL6 incident. And here's my final proof. Th that's a bullet? Where did you get that? This is the bullet used in the DL6 incident. This was taken from the heart of the victim, Mr. Gregory Edgeworth. The bullet is preserved quite nicely with all the ballistic markings intact. Ballistic markings. You may recall the term. It came up in the first trial two days ago. Ballistic markings are the fingerprints of a weapon. All bullets fired from a gun are marked with the weapon's unique pattern. By examining the markings, you can tell which weapon fired the bullet. It's quite accurate. We have two bullets in our possession. One, the bullet removed from Gregory Edgeworth's heart. The other, Mr. Von Karma, is the bullet buried in your shoulder. We could analyze both bullets. Then if the markings matched, we would know that both bullets have been fired from the same gun. The very same pistol. Other words, the murder weapon that killed Gregory Edgeworth. <laughs> Mr. Von Karma, you will let us remove the bullet from your shoulder. Then we'll compare the ballistic markings to those on this bullet. And solve this case once and for all. Well, Mr. Von Karma? <laughs> That scream. Why does Phoenix look like he has AirPods in his ears? Huh. Never thought of it that way. That scream. I've heard that scream before. Wait, I know! Help! I can't breathe! Quiet! I said quiet! You're not making this any easier! Stop breathing my air! I'll, I'll stop you! Stop breathing my air! Get away! Get away from my father! Bang. It's that scream I heard in the elevator. Fifteen years ago. Von Karma, it was you who screamed! Mr. Von Karma! It's morphed! And if only you would dare to find me! So it was you. You and your father are my curse! Your father shamed me with a penalty on my record. And you, you left a scar on my shoulder that would never fade! I'll, I'll bury you! I'll bury you with my bare hands! Death! Death! Fifteen years earlier. Chief Prosecutor, I'm sorry. Von Karma, it's not like you had to make this kind of error. I never would have thought that Edgeworth would be the one to catch you. My was careless. I'm sorry, but you will have to be penalized. I've covered you for you in the past, but not this time. Karma would make an excellent hammer. <laughs> Edgeworth! It was a shock. Like none I had ever known. Me? Penalized? It took hours for me to regain my composure. Suddenly I found myself in the darkness. I was in the court room, in the court records room. I must have wandered in there without thinking where I was going. The room was pitch black. The lights must have gone out. I went out into the hall and felt my way to the elevator. I pressed the button, but nothing happened. Then, there was a noise. I was in pain. A horrible burning pain in my shoulder. Just then, the lights came back on. The elevator door opened before my eyes. I saw three people inside, all lying unconscious from oxygen deprivation. Much to my surprise, a pistol lay at my feet. I knew them. 
It was destiny. Are you going to play uh, Professor Layton versus Phoenix Wright? Maybe. But I think that one's on 3DS, so I would both need to get a copy for legal purposes, and then find the right settings to get it running on a, an emulator, because god damn you, everything surrounding the 3DS recording s s scene is just that, especially now that nobody's making them anymore, so they go for a hot premium. I can't really, like, afford that expense. So I'd have to, like, again, buy the game physically, legal purposes, and then emulate it. So that could be a little bit of an issue. Mainly because the 3DS emulation software is very finicky. So it would take testing just to make sure it's like, hey, can I at least get a somewhat <laughs> half-decent uh, <laughs> experience out of this? It's the same thing that I'm kind of running tests on with uh, the Fire Emblem games on 3DS because, bam. Because uh, that is done by the Professor Layton team. Phoenix Wright speaks in some cutscenes. Huh, that would be interesting. I do want to check out Professor Layton games because uh, I know that they're, like, much different. Uh, I forget exactly how different. I know that they're, like, puzzle mysteries, and I want to experience that. My new win. It was destiny. <laughs> they reused the same graphic. I found that amusing. In his last moments, Gregory Edgeworth was still unconscious. He died never knowing who had shot him. I would play those games, but the puzzles would hurt my brain. I want my brain to hurt because it would be an experience. Later he spoke through a medium, blaming Mr. Yogi. He was fooled. It was the perfect crime. Tisk, tisk, tisk. Who would have thought another man would have come to open that elevator door? Judge! What? What are you doing? Do your job! Bring it in to this miserable charade! Now, end it! Very well. It appears that we have come a very long way to the end of this maze. Fifteen years later, Mr. Miles Edgeworth? Yes, Your Honor. You are innocent. You are innocent. As you said, it was all a nightmare. Yes, Your Honor. This court finds the defendant, Miles Edgeworth, not guilty. Maybe he did know who killed him, but Edgeworth might owe him a lot. No, because uh, he was... Especially because he specifically called out... Uh... Uh, von Karma about his faulty dealings with evidence and testimony and stuff, that he had a grudge against Von Karma on a basis of being a defense attorney against a prosecutor. So, he passed out from the oxygen deprivation and when he was summoned by Misty Fay, he thought that the only person who could have killed him well, actually, no. He thought that his son did accidentally kill him, so he said it was Yanni Yogi to protect Edgeworth. But that was because he thought Yanni Yo uh, he thought Edgeworth did kill him. But the truth was, he survived that first bang, passed out from oxygen deprivation, and then was shot in his, well, not sleep, but unconsciousness. That is all. This court is adjourned. I'm kind of surprised that Von Karma, like, calmed down enough to recount how everything happened and basically said, Come on, judge, get it over with. That was a ride! Nick! Nick, we did it! Did you see his face? Von Karma looked even paler than usual. Actually, how about playing Axe Attorney Investigations? I do plan on doing that, and there is indeed a, uh, a fan patch for an English of the sequel, which apparently is the only game from the Ace Attorney line to not come to America, or English translations. Ah! So yeah, Investigations is on the table eventually. He's pretending to be all cool, but inside you crushed him, Nick. Crushed! I gotta say, I'm impressed. <laughs> it was pretty close, though. I was sure we'd had it. I know, I was on the verge of tears the whole time, myself. But now it's all just a good memory. So it's finally over, Edgeworth. Right? Yeah? I... I'm not sure how to say this. I know, I know, try thank you. 
I... I see. Th thank you, right? You're welcome. I think you could have done better than that. I'm sorry, I'm not good at this sort of thing. You gotta learn, Edgeworth. You, you got a lot to learn, Edgeworth. He's got you there. Oh! Amazing, pal! You pulled through just like I thought you would! I'll never forget this. I owe you one, pal! And tonight, let's party! Dinner's on me! Yeah, my salary went down a bit this month, but who cares? See, Mr. Edgeworth, you should take a lesson from Detective Gumshoe. That's how you say thank you. Hmm. I... I see. <clears throat> Whoop! I... I feel foolish. <laughs> Don't worry. Take it a little at a time. You'll get used to it. It's been 15 years since I've seen Edgeworth this unguarded. Hey, y'all! Lotta! Y'all are great back there! Thank you! Yo, Edgeworth, congrats! Uh, thank y'all very much. Edgeworth got shafted when it comes to powers, Phoenix gets Cyclox, Apollo gets the ability to see when someone's lying by the smallest movements, Edgeworth gets logic! <laughs> I knew you were innocent from the start, of course. Just look at you, you wouldn't stick your hand in a cookie jar even if no one was there. You were the witness on the first day of the trial, weren't you? Yeah, well, let bygones be bygones, eh? Speaking of which, what are you doing now, Lotta? Who, well, me? I went back to college. I gave up trying to be an investigative photographer pretty quick. Really? That's too bad, huh? Isn't that hot dog guy from the park? Huh? It's over, Nick. My life is over! Why the sad face, Larry? What happened now? Oh, Nick, I'm not long for this world. Uh, you don't look sick. It's Kianzi! She, she's going to live in Paris! Paris, Nick! She's leaving me behind! Should have seen that coming. Yo, Edgy! There you are! Um, yes, here I am. Congrats, Edgy! Here, a little gift from me in celebration. Oh, but investigation two, he gets a logic chess! Oh, big step up! Oh, that sounds tedious and hilarious. Celebration. That's unusual for you. Harry Butts, you come along too. My treat, pal. Huh? Uh, thanks. Looking forward to it. Yo, yo, Nick. That's the suit that questioned me. When he says treat, that's not police talk for prison food, right? Right? Uh, I think you'll be fine, Larry. Right? Yeah? What's up? That envelope that Larry gave me, it's got money in it. Well, yeah, that's not the strange. People give money away to celebrate sometimes. It's $38, right? Oh yeah, like like you said. I, for some reason I thought maybe this would come up later. Ah, huh. what a weird amount. I mean, it's not a little, but it's not a lot either. 38 exactly? But Nick, wasn't that exactly the amount of lunch money that was stolen from Mr. Edgeworth in school? $38? No. No, Larry, it was you! What are you so surprised about, right? Huh? Larry was absent that day from school, right? Well, that doesn't automatically rule him out as a suspect. What? Think back to that day 15 years ago. Larry took the day off, but he was bored, so he came to school anyway. Then he saw the money lying there, and the rest is history. I never was good at history. <laughs> Edgeworth, you didn't know, did you? I suspected. I just couldn't picture Larry protecting you like he did that day. Everyone else was saying you did it. The whole class was against you, remember? Remember to stay hydrated while you reminisce with old friends about past pseudo-crimes. Yeah, too well. Right, you may not know this, but we used to have a saying back in school. When something smells, it's usually the butts. I know, I know! Really, right? I'm surprised you didn't figure it out. Well, this sure is an unexpected turn of events, eh? Edgeworth. Hmm? You should have told me! Now, now, Nick, it was 15 years ago! Don't you think the statute of limitations has run out, Mr. Edgeworth? I'd say so, yes. <laughs> there you have it! Uh, where does that leave me? I became a defense attorney because of what you two did! Well, you have always been something of an insufferable emotionalist. Yeah! And you get worked up too easily, too. The death! The death sentence for both of you! 
Man, if only I'd known, I'd have become a prosecutor! The same goes for me, only the other way around. For the longest time, I thought that I might have killed my own father. I thought I might be a criminal. I became a prosecutor in part to punish myself. If I had known the truth, I might have become a defense attorney after all. Edgeworth, want to switch right? <laughs> hey, y'all, light up, I'll take a photo. Hey, photo time, let's go. And after that, dinner on me. Detective Gumshoe took us out on the town that night. He celebrated Edgeworth's newfound freedom. Even though Edgeworth himself was still in detention. <laughs> Poor man. December 29th, 5.02 a.m., Wright & Co. Law Office. Man, it's been a bit since we've seen this photo, or this, uh, location screen. Ugh, oh, I went a little overboard yesterday. My head hurts. Honestly, Phoenix as a prosecutor is a nice change of pace. Would be interesting. Huh? It's still only five. Maybe I should go back to sleep. Huh? What's this? A letter? Ah, uh, is Maya going away? Morning, Nick. You were really impressive yesterday. Seeing you made me think about what I'm doing here. I'm a spirit medium, in training, of course. I wanted to help Mr. Edgeworth, too. I wanted to help you, but I couldn't. I was using- You are literally the reason why we got Von Karma in that pinch. You got the bullet that was literally the ace in the hole. So I decided to go back to my training. I'll become a full-fledged spirit medium, for starters. I couldn't say it to you, to your face, so I left this letter. Goodbye, Nick. My friend! G goodbye What time is it? God, the first trains for the mountains have already left to the station! Wow! This is a unique scream. Nice. I guess I'm too late. Hey! N Nick! Maya! <laughs> Awkward. So, you're leaving. Yeah. It's hard being a spirit medium who can't talk to spirits. And... I think you'll do fine without me, Nick. Be good, okay? Guess what? Where my is going is only two hours away, so Nick could visit her any time! <laughs> ah, these silly kids. Wait! What? I never could have saved Edgeworth without your help. Huh? On the last day of the trial, I heard her. I heard Mia's voice. You heard my sister? Yes. Only her voice, but still. It was the very end when I thought we'd lost everything. Well, that's my sister for you. Detective Gumshoe helped in Mr. Grossberg and even Larry. I'm the only one who couldn't help. You literally got the bullet that saved the day! The fool. I'm the only one who couldn't help. I was useless, Nick. But you were the one who stopped Von Karma, Maya. Huh? I didn't do anything! All I did was wander around in a daze. Sorry, but I have evidence that you helped. E evidence? Show my evidence to cheer her up. Bullet. A bullet? Von Karma was convinced he had taken all of the evidence pertaining to DL6. But you were the one who rescued the last piece of evidence we needed. This was the bullet that put an end to Von Karma. And you were the one who gave it to me. Nick. Thanks, Maya. Couldn't have done it without you. I'll be back soon. Huh? I'm gonna complete my training and come back. Okay. I'll be waiting. I think Karma hung himself in prison. Hmm. I don't know. I think he's a bit too vindictive for that. But who knows? Maybe future games will tell. Who knows? <laughs> who knows with this series? Okay. I'll be waiting. Of course you will. You can't run that office by yourself. You're hopeless. Uh, I don't know about that. He is in prison. That's true. But I don't think he hung himself. So this is it. See you soon, Maya. That's an adorable picture. Thanks, Nick. So my story ends. Time to turn a new page. And 
say goodbye to the novice defense attorney that I once was. Now and a new story begins with the same old crazy cast of characters. Ha! Don't think you've graduated yet, Avatar. Mr. Wright, perhaps you'd like to rethink that claim. Uh, yes, Your Honor. Uh-oh, I got a bad feeling about this. Yeah, we still have one case left. I, I do find it funny that, unless they moved it, because... Hey, pal! Mr. Edgeworth came down to the precinct to wish me a Happy New Year. Talk about a pleasant surprise. Whoop! Detective Gumshoe! <laughs> then he hung his head low and went right back outside. <laughs> Hilarious. Uh, kind of like he was embarrassed or something. Strange, huh? I like that he just is stuck on the whoop now. <laughs> huh? Nick? Nah, haven't seen him lately. Who, me? I've been working at a cheese shop. That missy's a nice lady, but she's not exactly what you'd call a cheap date. Huh? Oh, she's in Hawaii right now, yeah. But you have no luck with women. You just need to completely cut your losses. Either stop being creepy to people like Maya, or stop going after expensive women. Who? Right? Yeah, I remember him. I hear he's been busy lately. You know, not to ring my own bell, but I sort of taught him everything he knows. I'm sure he's grateful. You are literally the tutorial man. <laughs> you lost one case against him, and that is all we saw of you. You weren't even... You didn't... Granted, he wasn't, like, super terrible, I guess. He just had a bad case. Phoenix Wright? Hmm. Ah, the defense attorney for whom I wrote that affidavit for, yes! Oh, you should know, I've taken over management of the Gatewater Hotel recently. Should you be in the area, please stop by. I like that character. He's a silly man. I do still find it funny that they kept this kind of epilogue thing even though there should be a fifth case. Because that was added in the DS version. <laughs> oh, it's you. A Phoenix Wright. Ah, yes. Mia's understudy, was he not? I wonder how he's doing. Haven't seen him as of late. Ah, the days of my youth lack the scent of fresh democracy. <sighs> he never did replace that. You'd think that he would have replaced the empty place by now on the wall. He didn't even take down the photo brackets that hold up pictures. Phoenix Wright? Is he an actor? Well, I'm not buying it. You can't be a star with a name like Phoenix. Did you know that I can't read that fast? There was a DVD in there. Everything these days now am I supposed to keep it up with that rock? The actor in The Joker, he's a Joaquin Phoenix. He must be sad. I'm pleased to announce the prin Pink Princess is a hit. I sure owe that Mr. Wright a great deal. Oh, and I'm keeping my face out of the public eye till the show's over. I wouldn't want to ruin any kid's dreams, you know. I find it funny that because Pearl is a little kid when Mia takes her body, so the kimono doesn't cover the cleavage. Yeesh. That's weird. Oh, I got a letter from Maya the other day. It sounds like she caught a cold standing under a waterfall. I wanted to visit, but didn't have time, so I sent her some Pink Princess trading cards. She says she can't buy them where she is. What kind of place is she living anyway? Apparently two hours away! <laughs> hey, it's the kid. Right? Who's that? You wanna talk? Let's talk Pink Princess. All right! But, you know, I snuck into the studio the other day, and I saw her, the one inside the Pink Princess suit. Uh, what a dog. It was kind of a shock for a boy of my tender age. Ah, <laughs> uh, it's Penny Nichols, the money girl. Literally, it's in her name. At least she won't nickel and dime ya. Just nickel and penny. Yeah, I remember, right? The lawyer guy. Uh, me, I'm in training to become a paranormal photographer. You know, the picture I took of everyone? Well, just behind them, there's a ghost. For real, now that's talent. I'm gonna be famous. And hilarious, I don't think she's lying. Cause there is one ghost that could be in that photo. Maybe two. Maybe if Ma Edgeworth Sr. wanted to come in. Nope, just Mia. Ah, oh, this is a good photo. 
Especially nice to see Phoenix, like, outside of a case. I also love how the picture is framed perfectly so that Mia was included. <laughs> Sudden. A brand new episode has been added. That looks kind of creepy. Of course we want to save. We shall save. And then I shall give my thoughts of the main, like... The main section, because, like I've said the past few times, the fifth case is just an additional, like, bonus case that was added once the original 2001 GBA game was ported over to the DS. So they're like, hey, look, you actually get your money's worth for buying game on a second system. And so... It's prob- I for- I, it's been so long since I've heard anything about the fifth case. I don't think I heard anything bad about it. Rise from the Ashes is the only case that doesn't have Turnabout in the name. Yep, that's also true. All the other ones are Turnabout. I guess they figured, hey, since all of the cases are kind of tied in the same kind of trilogy, well, kind of trilogy, with the Steel Samurai on the side, but even then Turnabout Samurai, Rise from the Ashes, I guess they're like, hey, let's name this something different just to commemorate it as being an additional bonus thing that's not part of a kind of overarching thing. I kind of like it, but I don't think I've heard anything bad about it. I think it's mostly just, yeah, this is just the extra, hey, look, DS features case. So my thoughts overall of the four cases that precede this. I love this game. There are a few times where I think that some testimony words are a bit similar. And like in the final case, you're like, which thing do I actually use? Because there are at times, sometimes multiple pieces of evidence that you could theoretically use. Have you noticed the third case in every game is the weakest? I've only played the first game so far, so no. And even then, I I don't I don't find the turnabout samurai to be a, a weak case. It just it stands out due to the fact that it doesn't really play into the DL6 incident. The first one, you get to know Mia, and it's kind of a tutorial, and sets up Larry Butts, who is a childhood friend of Edgeworth, so that kind of counts. Then the second case has Red White, who was kind of part of it, as well as kills Mia. And then, uh, and, like, it just kind of leads up to, and then suddenly, Turnabout Samurai. And I personally like the Turnabout Samurai case. It Again, it stands out, but it also kind of built up the difficulty compared to the first two, so it kind of eases you in difficulty-wise, which is nice. And yeah, overall, I like the investigating, looking around. I like the kind of kind of logic puzzle-ish that it is. It's just that there are some times where you know immediately that there is a contradiction, but you need to wait for the precise moment to actually bring out the, that contradiction. And then again, sometimes in witness testimonies, sometimes they'll have two testimonial word, uh, like lines that are similar, and then you'll have multiple pieces of evidence that are similar, and you'll be like, which one do I use? But in the end, that's kind of why they give you multiple penalties that you can take. Or you could be like me and save scum. Mm. It's a video game. And I would say that none of my logic was terrible, except for some of the Steel Samurai stuff at the end with Vasquez. But that's mostly because I was still in my super duper hooked on one train of logic. But yeah, I like the art. The HD art in the case, like, in the game has been really good. The music, even though I think the music is literally just transplanted from the DS game, it's still very good music. I really like it. It's classic. The characters, I like the characters. I like voicing them. I like that each character is very unique in their own way. And, like, <laughs> crazy turnabout mystery case stuff. I like how the mysteries work. That you can, like, sometimes know some things are off immediately. And then other times even the case will blindside you. <laughs> and then sometimes I'm just kind of going along and I'll miss a key piece and still... <laughs> come out ahead like the one thing that I will never forgive myself is that when I was doing the Steel Samurai at the end with Vasquez I missed the part where she said that it was Mr. Hammer who was limping when it should have been Will Powers 
And that is the big contradiction. It's like, that is how we know that you are the killer. You saw Mr. Hammer in the game. But yeah, overall, so the original, the original game, the 2001 GBA game, I think is really good. It's very nice. It has a clear, like, throughput. The characters are nice. And it builds up the DL6 incident, the ties to the phase. And it's just like, it's really good. I really like it. I still find it a bit weird that, like, Phoenix didn't get any, like, jobs after he literally brought down Red White. Red White was supposed to be this, like, super millionaire investigative company guy who had politicians and literally the entire justice system wrapped around his finger and you'd think that not only like making him break down in court but also last minute hail mary get a confession out of him that he was a murderer would have nailed him some good good jobs <laughs> yeah but who knows and I don't even think he got paid for his first two jobs, Phoenix, because the first one was free because Larry was like, yeah, I'm not going to pay you. This is a, a, this is a nice thing that my friend is doing. And then the second one, Maya probably didn't have much money and Phoenix couldn't pay himself and he was the defendant in the end. Ah, this is all crazy, but yeah. Ace Attorney, fantastic game. We'll probably have to do two more streams, if not more, to finish off Rise from the Ashes, because it'll probably be of a similar length to turn about goodbyes, because it is the final case, and they'll probably introduce new things, and it'll probably be even more complex, because I'm like, we have to add something. Oh. But yeah, this game so far, utterly fantastic. It's probably just my own brain not meshing with the logic. But yeah, utterly love this game fantastic can't wait to play more in the trilogy that is this package and then other cases or other cases other games in the franchise like investigations and maybe the 3ds ones if i can get them to function and get my hands on them as well as the latent crossover and i will have to check out the latent games as well because i am i am no fool i will let myself be fooled because puzzles can be nice but yes Thank you very much for watching, everybody. If you want more from me, I have two YouTube channels, an edited content YouTube channel that I swear content is coming to eventually, called Neon Icy Wings, and then my archive channel, where all these streams end up, as well as stream from on YouTube, the Neon Icy Games channel. And then, of course, if you're on the Neon Icy Games channel and you'd prefer Twitch for some reason, there's always the Neon Icy Wings Twitch channel for streams. And then elsewise, I have various other social medias that should be listed in my link tree because there are way too many. The link tree should be li like linktr.ee slash neonicywings and it should be found in any of those description boxes and about things on various sites. But the other sites that should be the, that I hang out on are like Twitter, DeviantArt, Newgrounds, Tumblr, where I post art. Huzzah, I need to draw more. Yeah. But yes, thank you very much for watching, and I hope to see you dudes next time. Bye-bye.